You're listening to the After Dark Podcast with NT Paranormal. Nothing normal about it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back. We're doing good. So this is our third week in a row of actually being able to, uh, you know, broadcast and bring you uh, consecutive content. So, you know, I feel like I unlocked an achievement here. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We brought in an alternate today. Last time we had Allie. Today we have Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Hi, I'm hiding behind the mic on purpose. Oh, yeah, that's good. Don't be shy. <laughs> How have you been? Oh, you know, I got my job back, so I've been working. Oh, that's always good. Yeah. Um, how's the virus treating you? Uh, I've gained a lot of weight. We I've all have. You and TV. everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the way that you'd imagine it'd go. I've gained so much weight, I've taken to working out gross yeah it's horrible it's the worst and then i gave it up and then i picked it back up again today we we went on a nice little hike today a little little how how long was that hike you're the one that was tracking it it. three and a half miles (laughs) but we went somewhere cool a bridge where there was a death i don't yeah i don't think i know the story of the bridge no i haven't i haven't i haven't regaled you guys with the with the tale of the bridge it's a supposedly haunted bridge in arlington arlington yeah and it's also the wrong bridge is what i love about it that's the bridge everybody goes to and they're like this is where this thing happened and it's not that bridge doesn't exist anymore and it's like on the other side of the river But then this other totally horrible tragedy happened on that bridge that we went to, and nobody Because in Texas, people's favorite thing is jumping off of bridges headfirst into water where they don't know how deep it is. That's How did you guess? That's exactly what happened. Because that's what everyone does at every bridge. (laughs) I'm surprised a goat doesn't haunt that bridge. (laughs) There's a goat man. (laughs) Why is there a goat? Where is there a goat man? With as many goat men as we have in Texas, that's just basically its own cryptid category. Yeah. It's more pervasive than the chupacabra. I thought goat man was its own category Uh, at this point. It is. Oh. Goat men, goat, goat men of Texas. <laughs> I'm surprised that's not like the Texas mascot <laughs> at this point. Goat man, do they have the creepy square pupils? Didn't Goat man fire the cannon? Wasn't he the one that was like, come and take it? Yes, it, it was Goat man. Yep, he says, screw you, Cortez. Goat man needs his own theme song. So, <laughs> <laughs> you got off topic there. <laughs> No, not really. I, I don't know that we have a topic. No such thing as off topic. Yeah, that's true. There is no topic on topic. What? Okay. Um, no, today's topic is things groups do to screw up their own investigations, basically. Things they're doing wrong. But I wanted to take a different spin on it. I didn't just, like, we're always just jumping on everybody else. So Things we do wrong. Yeah, do. so when, when I made my list... <laughs> When, when I was writing everything out, I wrote out things that we do wrong, and, like consistently. And, and it's things we know we do wrong and we try to improve upon, you know, every investigation and, and, and do better. And then Kristen also made a list and she didn't know that that's how I was making my list and also mm-hmm. did the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> apparently we just suck at investigating. <laughs> Is that After reading the list, I'm like, man, we just suck at this. Why? <laughs> Why do we even <laughs> investigate anything? We're not we're Fun. not uh, guilty of all of them. Just just some of them. No, we're guilty of every. <laughs> some of them are intentional. Some of them not so much. Every last atrocity we're definitely guilty of. <laughs> not not even just early on, but I'm talking like the last one we went on. We always oh, screwed up. Um, I can't even remember what the last one was we went on. I'm sure I'm sure it was one of the Hill House. One, was that the last thing we've done? We didn't, me and you did a dinner thing at uh, the warehouse. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, that is the last thing that we've done. We did like one, like a, a quick one at the, it was like a public investigation mm-hmm. up, oh, at, yeah. up at the warehouse. And we did that. And we, what sucks is some cool stuff happen. Man, I'm getting a lot of slapback. What's the deal with that? Okay. Um, what sucks is. A lot of cool stuff kind of happened during a public investigation, but like every public investigation, we didn't capture it and none of it was validated, but I think some cool stuff took place. Yeah, and that was Warehouse 9 that we do sometimes. The helium plant. Yeah. 
which we need to go back to here pretty soon. Which Hangman's is actually going to be uh, open in October. They they've got all the volunteers together. They're they're doing all the stuff to get ready. So I'm really curious how they're going to do that. Yeah, without everybody dying. I don't know. Maybe they're going to do like a drive through, or uh, maybe it's all over Skype. Yeah, you just you walk in and they just got screens set up everywhere and they're like, boom, motherfucker. That's all I can imagine. Uh, Steven's talking about that time he quietly narrated how each of us die while, fil- while filming us doing some stuff. It's not as funny as he remembers no, it. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, I had to sit through it and I was like, ah, thanks for ruining all my footage. That's great. I have absolutely nothing I can do for an episode here. But that would be something that we've done wrong. Uh, let people help. <laughs> let that, Steven help. Yeah. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, before we get into that, though, um, I, did a, I did a major revamp of our website last night. Not, not so much visually, but um, like the way it works and, and some of the functionality of it. I thought I should bring it up because uh, the way I've been writing a lot of articles lately and the way it works now is when you go in there there's actually like a, di- a discussion forum for every article and so if you guys haven't had a chance like if if you go and read an article and like you have questions or something to say about it like we can go in and discuss it with you things like that um we also started uh basically an affiliates page which is other groups that we work with um companies that uh, basically stuff kind of like centered around paranormal investigation and occult and stuff like that. So like if you're, um, Harvest Rose Witchery is on there. She, she helps people with, you know, readings and, and going into their house and stuff like that. So like, she's got a page on there, but as part of that, like, um, I started talking to a bunch of other people in paranormal groups and stuff that we work with last night. And I thought this was kind of a good idea. And I, Charlene with um, Paranormal Hauntings kind of got me started on the thinking because we're constantly like complaining about the ethics of other groups and, and things like that and not really coming up with a lot of solutions. And I got to thinking about it. And so I'm making a, a part of our website where everybody can like list their groups and, and what they do or their business or whatever. But is part of that um we're actually going to be sitting down with some of the other paranormal investigators and stuff and we're going to be coming up with like a code of ethics uh and, and draft that up like um like a standards and practices for paranormal groups to adhere to um to be a part of that list and then if they get like too many bad reviews or you know somebody reveals them to be scammers or we find out they're faking evidence or anything like that um, they won't be allowed to be on that list. In fact, they'll go on a very special list or whatever. But um, a bunch of like paranormal investigation, especially since COVID hit, a bunch of people have been, a bunch of the other groups have been talking about kind of how shitty it's got with everybody kind of gatekeeping and all that. So I think a bunch of us are kind of thinking about kind of of an unofficial official unionization. <laughs> of of it. and it's it's such a gray area because like you know we're a science group and other groups would not be science groups you mm-hmm. know it's like how do you regulate a psychic or or whatever you know yeah. but um that is a project we're going to be working on soon so if any of the other paranormal investigators who are watching are interested in something like that you know message us if you have some like ideas or, or contributions or if you have any kind of interest in something like that Because I think it would help a lot, especially for, like, people that are looking for investigators. Because they could go, you know, it'd be like, what is that, Angie's List for contractors, you know, (laughs) where they're all guaranteed. It'd be somewhere they could go and say, okay, these people have all been vetted. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I know I have if they screw me over, they, like, try to charge me a bunch of money and scam me, they have some kind of, like, recourse with Mm -hmm. it. So that's kind of something we're working on. I just wanted to bring that up before we went into you know, how we screw up investigations. So how do you guys think we, (laughs) what what do you think we do wrong? What do you think other groups do wrong? What what do you guys got? I didn't, you didn't tell me to make a list, so I didn't. I was just, I'm off the top of your head. I was just, geez. Just say stuff, God. Good Lord. I don't know. I do think it's interesting that whenever given this prompt, you went the technical way with 
you know, fancy technology, and I went the human emotion aspect of it. So I thought that was interesting that we both kind of took our own takes on it. Yeah, I, I think I was thinking more in terms of what we screw it, because I, I was thinking in terms of uh, what we screw up that like invalidates our evidence, yeah. and, and most of that would be technical, I guess. But I, I like I liked your angle on it too. Let, let's start with your list. Oh, actually. okay. Um, so just because mine's like more comprehensive, so I yeah, can probably mine's a lot easier to understand. So like the first thing a lot of people do, and we are guilty of it too, but usually on purpose, is amping each other up before an investigation because it gets you know. Now, what do you mean by like amped up? I mean before I get ready to do any project, I amp myself up, man. I listen <laughs> to Eye of the Tiger. I think I go of, rub one out in the back. I think of on the way to Kyle when we start talking about all the stuff that's happened yeah, there, all the scary and things. someone gets anxious and they go, "Man, I'm anxious," and someone else goes, "Then nah, nah, I'm anxious too," yeah. and it just builds. It and spirals. Builds and builds. Yeah, or you're so excited about a place that it kind of just rubs off on somebody else, and then they get overly excited, and then it kind of, I don't know, just the way that you approach see, it. See, I, is I a feel bit like different. that could also help us at the same time. Yeah, but, but but I do see where you're coming from on it, and I see like the I see like the TV investigate. You know, they're supposed to be. The, I don't know that that should be our gold standard. But we were talking. You know, we were talking about last week Ghost Adventures, and, and we were watching the show. But what I noticed with them is they do they rile themselves up. In, in scary truth. But the thing is, what I think is funny, and you mentioned it, they act like they're immune to it. Or, or they think they're they immune to like it. They act like they're too good for it. Yeah. Like, I've been doing this They'll 15 years. They'll say that I in their recordings. Scared. They'll literally go, I've been a ghost hunter for 10 years. Can't scare me, ghost. And then scream and three then seconds later. And they rip off their shirt and they punch the ghost because it's ghost adventures and that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just oil up. You like this cross ghost? I'll fuck you up. <laughs> you like when I kiss my other male investigator ghost? Do you like this? Do you, do you like my non-heteronormative style of... <laughs> Of investigation. <laughs> do you like when we slow dance to Patrick Swayze? Julie <laughs> says, do you make a list of experiments you want to explore or re-explore? We usually have a list before we go. Oh, yeah. I have an itinerary. Yeah. I, I get called Sheldon for my yeah, itineraries. My, my, my dad itineraries calls you are Sheldon famous. Cooper. Good God. It's like 17 no, that, pages long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's on my list. 30-second bathroom break. <laughs> it's scheduled in at seven twenty seven. I don't have to go right now. Too bad. Go. <laughs> you go now. <laughs> that's on my that's yeah, on my technical list. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um but yeah, no, I, I see it too. And like they get amped up and then they're they're more prone to like making mistakes or or, or making like false positives, thinking mm -hmm. something's happening. Or they're just so sensitive now that everything's scary because but, I'm so amped up. But I, I see us do that by mistake sometimes, like you said, like at Kyle, mm -hmm. where we're not trying to do that. Yeah, there's a difference between on purpose and yeah, on yeah. accident. And, that, and that's what I wanted to mention is like sometimes we, we're doing it on purpose as part of an experiment. Yeah. But it's, it's usually a control. Like we'll pick one person and they don't know it's coming. Like... It, like yeah, he says this is an experiment. This is actually just a thing they did to me for like two years. It's also just fun. It is. It's and hilarious. And then he decided it was an experiment. Yeah. It, but it is because what it kind of shows is like if nothing is happening all night and then you you rile up one person on purpose, like mm -hmm. in a controlled way and send them off to do something, then all of a sudden shit, shit starts happening. Yeah. It kind of tells you that, hey, maybe it's because you get riled up. Mm -hmm. and, and at which point... You know, we differentiate whether it's in the person's head uh, or if there's actually something happening because they're riled up because of uh, the, the, cam the cameras. Yeah. It, be, because we're, <laughs> we're watching it with cameras. So if that person gets amped up and you see a shadow walk across the room, they're probably not imagining it. Mm -hmm. But maybe the fact that them getting ramped up is what gives spirits energy to do that. But... If they go in and you don't see anything on the cameras and, and, and none of the equipment like lights up or, or makes whistling sounds or, or whatever it's designed to do at the time. And that person's like, yeah, there was definitely a ghost in there after, you know, you scared the shit out of me 10 minutes ago. Then you're probably just amped up. Mm -hmm. And it's... Um. Allie says, I think maybe looking up info about a place after... Uh, after basically doing the thing so that everyone goes in blind. The problem with that is at least someone has to know because unless you have, like, you can ask control EVP questions, but we also like to have a few that are specific to the location. Yeah. Um, I, so, But we always make sure 
someone goes into it. Yeah, that we doesn't know. Yeah, we we usually split the group in two. It's usually Kristen and Allie that don't know anything about a location. Mm-hmm. If if we can, it can never. It's never me because I'm the one that like networks or whatever. But we'll send in. Uh, half of our group to go do the interviews and talk to the clients and things like that. And then we'll bring in the other half of the group and they don't know anything about the location and we're not supposed to tell them. And I would love to just, none of us know anything and just do control questions, but it, it causes a real, it causes a problem on like multiple levels. Cause one, you're just at, you run out of things to ask. Yeah. So you end up just asking the same like six, seven questions over and over again. And the viewer gets really pissed off. They're like, ask something meaningful. That's it's like Mm -hmm. garbage or whatever. But if you also think of it from the perspective of it's like the entity's location or whatever. If somebody just walked in your house and asked you the same five unrelevant questions (laughs) over and over again, you're like, I'm calling the police. Like you're not (laughs) answering the question. Like, hey, is anybody here? Are you dead? What are you? What is your favorite color? Yeah, just like (laughs) stupid stuff. So um, I I like having pertinent questions to the history of the location and to the claims and stuff. But I try to keep the control people out of the room when they're doing that and do it as like separate experiments. That's my thought. What was your next one? Uh, The very opposite of that, which is before an investigation, just immediately saying, well, you know, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to be bored. There's nothing here. It's all explainable. And you kind of make the decision before you even go in. And so it kind of ruins the chances of experiencing the investigation. I feel and like that's I feel like that's only a mistake that our group makes. I feel yeah. like every other group on the planet goes in there like this place is definitely haunted. <laughs> it looked creepy. Gomez Adams was standing on the corner. Uh, uh, Freddy Krueger was outside, you know, that sort of thing. And we're just like, no place is haunted. This is stupid. Why do we even do this? We're complaining before we even get to the place. It it does, though. I've noticed it prevents us from accurately recording feelings, which is something I know we all feel stupid to do. Which is on my list. But we're working a lot harder at doing yeah. We say we're working a lot. We haven't done a freaking investigation, investigation. in but like a year. But before we dropped but, yeah. off, we had been working on it. Yeah, we were. Um, I have a new protocol that we kind of fix that. Too. Like with all this stuff, I also want to discuss things that we're that yeah. we're doing to work mm-hmm. on it and things like that. It's just finding a good line between those first two is kind of hard. Yeah, it's it's hard to be objective. And like also oh, excited and also have fun with it. Yeah, it's it's it's. I don't know. I think every person no matter what they're doing in life, is going to have some kind of bias one way or the other. I mean, it, it may even just be very, very slight. And I try to stay open to both sides of it because, you know, on the one hand, I've seen a ghost and I've had something grab my hand. And on the other hand, I I haven't seen anything that proves any of those things really happened. And I know that my senses can lie to me. I think that's why I like our group dynamic, because we have people more on the believer side and more on the skeptical side and people kind of on the fence. So it kind of helps balance it out. You know, I would I used to really brag about that, but I don't think that's true anymore. Oh, is everybody enough? I think now? everybody <laughs> ended up on the, in the far right hand camp. Oh. I don't think anyone was super in the believer camp to start with. I, 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 w- I would. Most, I would say but. you, when we very, very first started, were a pretty... I didn't even believe in ghosts then. Really? No. You were pretty freaked out about your house and some stuff like that. I was irritated by my children. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I think Allie was firmly in I, the, the believer camp. I know I was I firmly... I was solidly into the, in the believer camp until I started doing it a lot, like with Allie. And that kind of, and I was probably mid road when we started. Right. Well, I I had just had an experience, and I was yeah. like, oh yeah, this is a fucking thing. I'm gonna, I I, I see what's gonna happen now. And then I started doing, it and I'm like, well, I'm a moron. Oh, it, Ju- Julie says, do we ever feed false info like a test? Um, we haven't really so far, just because we either we have a pretty small location and a bunch of people in there, or we have a giant location. And not enough and, people. And not enough people. Yeah. Uh, we have done it once, once, but I haven't revealed the uh, what came of that experiment yeah. yet because it it was Hill House. I gave uh, Kristen and Allie completely bogus oh, information. I thought she meant like the EVP questions, like asking the ghost misleading questions. Oh, I thought it was for investigators, oh. maybe give them false oh. history. Because yeah, that's I, a I thing that's I a really want to do is take two groups of people into a house yeah. and feed them well, opposite. We, we did that at Hill House. So me and you have always known 
what the actual claims are at Hill House because we we were with the first group that went there, and um, I think Kristen went with us the first time too, but she wasn't I stayed outside, and I just like did yeah, yeah, she stuff. wasn't privy to any of the the info or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I f- I know I gave Kristen false info. I definitely know I gave Allie false info. Like I took notes of it. Um, the funny thing is, is um, I mean without without too many spoilers, it worked. Like, Allie definitely had experiences that lined up with the BS that I gave her. Oh. Um, with you, it wasn't so much. Hmm. But you are not so much hands-on as that you stay in the, like, monitoring area so yeah. much. So it, it wasn't it wasn't really a true test. But um, it was definitely back in that murder room. I fudged up a lot of the, the details of that actual room. And she was in it 100%. Hmm. So... It was it was it was interesting to see it that way, because me knowing the actual de- t- details is what freaks me out about that room. And we sat in there and we saw the thing crawling, but I don't think that we actually saw a thing crawling. I think we were just freaked out. I mean, that back area was pretty creepy. So. It's just really really dark. <laughs> it's the way that house is built too. It's I so know, awkward. It seems like a labyrinth <clears throat> in there. Um, yeah, that kind of kind of goes with always saying uh the next thing i had was allowing your control to be influenced and i know it's really hard whenever you have a control in there and you say we need to set up the cameras here and here and here that kind of already gives a clue of okay these are rooms to look out for or if they're in the and room while you're doing the, EDP you're doing the questions. EDP questions right and, so i figured out a, i figured out oh, shoot, a fix even to in the that. car on the way up there yeah yeah I, I figured out a fix to that problem just with, don't talk <laughs> no 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 it, it isn't that because like okay say you're the control but you're helping me set up all the equipment and stuff right i obviously i got to tell you where the hot spots are or mm-hmm. whatever the my solution to that is on every investigation make up two fake hot spots mm-hmm. and say yeah we got to record this room we definitely or, have to have it at this angle yeah yeah and just you know since i have to give you specific information about like okay this is how we got to record this room or whatever come up with two hot spots with like some kind of like bogus vague details about mm-hmm. it, it and all you're doing is wasting two cameras. Well, and maybe you're not. Maybe something fucking happens in there. Right. Who knows? Because it's so random anyway. Yeah. But it it keeps it keeps any of the controls not really knowing. Okay, which one of these tests is a control? Which one of these is the real ones? Mm-hmm. You know. It does get harder with the EVP questions, though, especially in small locations, because even when you're all the way across on the other side of the house, sometimes you can hear people doing the EVP. Yeah. yeah. And so unless you're wearing headphones or I have, like, the mic in the room turned off, I can hear all your questions. And so... Well, maybe... uh, Really, I think a good solution for that is taking half the night and doing just the base questions and then half the night doing the others. Or also (laughs) kind of what... Hey, Amelia. Kind of what my mom had said in the comments is we feed fake questions in there, too. Mm Mm-hmm. About events that never happened, we or heard or that your son died when he was six. Yeah, or, or slip in some fake names. You know, yeah. oh, is is Janet here when there's not a Janet a a Janet Janet. A, Janet. Uh, a banana Janet? There's not a there's not a Janet uh, uh, affiliated with that the location. <laughs> That's my idea. Janet is your idea. Okay, but yeah, I, in in all that. All that kind of adds up to the same thing is is somehow being influenced or not influenced before you go into the location. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, and it's kind of hard, too, because the thing that makes you interested to go into a place is going to be because somebody said it was haunted or the stories about it. I think we might be the only group that just picks a random location that looks creepy and we're it like, we're going to go that. investigate that, you know, and... And sometimes it works out, and a lot of times it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of other groups, they mainly go to places where it's like, oh, we've heard stories of activity. You need to come here. And then, you know, they're going to hear some stuff or look it up on the Internet. Yeah. And you have that preconceived idea of what you're going to find. What's so funny? <laughs> Lisa commented, Janana. 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 Janet, but damn it. Anyway, what was your next one? That's our uh, 
That's our show for today. Guys. That's, that's our sixth so, member of NT Paranormal, <laughs> Jananet. <laughs> the last two things in here are things we actually don't do, thankfully, but a lot of other groups do. Uh, one of them is taking yourself too seriously because... Uh, yeah, we definitely don't do you that. You don't. Do, do well, we in. might not take ourselves seriously enough sometimes. That, We're that, ghost that, hunting, for fuck's sake. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was what I talked about on my interview the other night. They were like... Uh, you seem like a really down to earth person, but I was like, don't trust my judgment. I hunt ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, what we're doing is mostly for fun. It's, a, I mean, there's science to it, but we're not like super serious. Oh man, I, I gave away some of the goods on that interview too. I can't wait until uh, they cut that up and put in the episodes because. Oh, uh, well, okay, so for that podcast, it's a beer. It's it, like you drink during it. Oh. So by the time it started, I was already three beers and a scotch into it. And they're like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. I got to go start it for you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they asked all the, you know, like our top five yeah. that we always get asked. And they're like, well, how did you get into ghost hunting? And, of course, I was like, you want the real answer or do you want the one I tell everybody? And they're like, oh, shit. So that came out. Cut his mic. Cut his mic. Yeah. Well, now I need to hear both of those. <laughs> well, you, you, know, you know the canned answer, the you know, the one that sells the book. The experience at the warehouse? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's totally why I do it. I totally wasn't trying to impress my girlfriend at the time. Oh. It had nothing to do with it. And she dumped you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sucks to be you. She's Next. still she's still in the group though, so yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, the and the last one I had on here is also something we're not guilty of and, and at least not knowing. Not that you know about. Yeah, not knowingly. That's just any time just overreacting to be entertaining. Oh like, no. Anything you think something's happening so you scream. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give away something oh, on our on. show that I probably shouldn't. You but, probably shouldn't. But I have coached in the past overreact to certain things so that when I'm <laughs> editing stuff together it gives some kind of reaction for the edit or whatever. And then we can But we don't, I don't think ever, I've ever done that. The only time I genuinely overreacted it's because I thought it was a human person and not a ghost person making the noises. Like I don't like hateful things. I don't think I don't think about it when something happens. I'm not going, "Oh, you better react." I'm going, "Oh shit, is that a raccoon or a monster?" So uh, there. Okay, so there's a difference between overreacting and reacting for the camera too. Yeah. Because the. Uh, no, I'm talking about people that go. Oh my god, there's definitely a ghost I saw. Go well, on. it, it also depends on if you're trying to make your footage entertaining for a viewer or if you're really just if you're really seriously just doing it for yourself, we would not have a podcast. Yeah. I, I mean, we would not put our stuff on Amazon if we weren't trying to right. The thought process behind it and we we haven't had the ability to pull it off successfully, but the thing is is go ahead and react. Verbalize feelings, things like that. React to it. Mhm. Mm I think she means in, in, more like the stuff we see on Ghost Hunters, where what's his face is rolling on the ground, screaming that he's possessed. There's there's between holy shit, what that was, was that noise, right. and oh my god, I'm possessed. I just punched my cameraman. Well, and, and also and also faking that something's going on too is what I mean. Like if you react to something and there's nothing there, but you try to pretend there's something there anyway, yeah, that's dishonest. That's I'm fine if like you hear a noise and you're like, holy shit, what is that? Oh, it's a tree. It's oh, okay, it's just fine. a tree. We can always use it for the cut yeah. to, to hook in the viewer or whatever. And then after the commercial break, we're like, it was a fucking tree. You know, that's, it's not dishonest. It's just entertaining. I feel yeah. like there's a line though. Yeah. It, there is a line. If all of a sudden it's the, you know. And the, I don't think we've ever crossed that Yeah, line. the honest reaction. We haven't no even made anything say. entertaining, so... <laughs> The honest reaction, no matter how insane it seems, it's, it's still an honest reaction. Yeah. I, I mean, the people who just very obviously just for viewers and entertainment purposes. Oh, uh, make it. Uh, like when we went out to Tyler and the chick was, oh, it's someone had a someone had what? What was it? An abortion. It a, oh, a oh, yeah, that's what it was. It was an abortion. The one I'm that still you were mad sitting at there that guessing. I bet it's an abortion. It's going to be a baby. And just, oh, I bet it was a back alley abortion. Yeah, it was a back alley abortion. You she, were right. Jesus Christ. Oh I am still God. mad about that. That was so just irritating. Just running the or the, the guy who was like, there's definitely a cold spot right here. Um, but <laughs> Emilio says, yes, it's the difference between reacting for camera and overreacting for evidence. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I never yeah, want to fabricate anything. Yeah. But 
I also think that there's a balance to it too, because we have spent so much of our time, like, cause we actually did this like a long time before we started getting serious about trying to make it entertaining at the same time. And we got used to paranormal investigating and, and what stuff was. So there's a lot of shit like we hear that we just like ignored. Like we are, as much as we get boned for reacting on camera, we underreact so, so much, much, so much. Because I'll hear like voices in the back, but I automatically assume it's just Allie talking on the phone mm -hmm. or that Eli's just, <laughs> you know, doing his vape. Especially if we're outside. It's very hard to, if you hear oh, a noise. Footsteps. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's immediately it's, an animal. Just, like, like we don't even, we debunked it so many times. We don't even investigate it. And it's a, it's a problem okay. for yeah. video. I still have you on film screaming because you heard a bunny. So it will be forever. It was a very scary bunny. <sighs> the bunny did scream. Like an old woman. Julie says, I think you get bored. Yeah, we... I don't think it's so much that we get bored. I think we get kind of jaded to yeah, all the stuff we over hear. And, and over and over again, and then you just kind of become immune to Lisa it. Lisa says, I don't think you know if you're possessed. Zach does. He knows every time. <laughs> he knows when it's coming. He knows when it's leaving. God, Zach Bagans. <laughs> Everything. Oh, I told that other group about our uh, Zach Bagans drinking game. I, I got to post up the rules for that somewhere. It's, it's a beer every that. time he gets possessed. <laughs> <laughs> a beer every time he hears a, a voice. Oh no! You can't. You gotta take it. Uh, you gotta take a drink every time he says it's a class A EVP. Oh my God! It was great when you called that. You're, you're like, there was an EVP, and you're like, I bet it's class A. And he's like, that's a class A EVP, brah. And I'm like, what? That's is not a this? thing. That is awesome. What does a class B and C sound like? Kind of jumbled. <sighs> it's like class C's and Espanol. I don't even speak that, brosif. Or every time they brosif. say dude or bruh. Oh God! You, you would die. die. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that show. Uh, I love to hate that show. Um, I love to hate our show. It is actually horrible. I've gone back through a rewatch, and I realize why we have just horrible reviews. <laughs> We're underreactive. I am very just dry, um, condescending. I know everything. Yeah, apparently. we That's all just, know how you act. <laughs> it's good you that you're natural. seeing it. <laughs> I saw it before, but the thing is, is I do know everything about what I'm talking about in there, but I come off that way and it's bad. Yeah. Screw you. <laughs> All I wanted was a little, no, nah, it's not that bad, man. But, but it is. You guys suck ass. <laughs> I mean. Straight ass. <clears throat> no, of course not. No, you see, you're just. You're only a nine on the one to ten condescension scale. <laughs> My problem is, is I thought um, for our show, honesty would was carry it. I, I thought I thought that would carry it. People find that boring, though. I find it carry. boring. Yeah. I watched it, and I'm like, God, what? what is this missing? Oh, possessions. That's <laughs> And psychics and mediums and yeah. ghosts. And, yeah. I don't know. But I, I'm past wanting a show. Like, we're, we're still going to make videos. I, I got a new idea for a new format and stuff, but I'm not trying to, like, market it anymore. I, I, think, I, I think, well, I told you the new format. I think we found kind of a, a formula that might lend itself to somebody giving a shit again. I just want to go on ghost hunts. I don't know. I, I know. That. I do too. That's all I want to do is ghost hunt. I never thought that Julie would use that word to describe anybody. Apparently you are very stoic. Mm. No, I'm not. My dad says the same thing about me and it's not true. I think it's just the keeping in the emotions whenever you hear something and you don't go huh, what was that? And instead we go nothing, 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 nothing. I also think a lot of times I'm trying to be professional like on an invest, I'm like, oh no, okay, come on, let's, this is what we do, like or organized mm -hmm. to to get stuff done. Or I sometimes I seem like I'm not upset, and I'll very calmly say to the person next to me, "We need that, to leave." No, that that wasn't a big deal. That was just a whatever. I think it's also part of like a toxic thing in the community. If you don't want to be seen as like a baby, and that you're a scaredy cat. That's our number one big comment is if if you're that scared, maybe you shouldn't be. Uh, hunting ghosts. I just telling the person next to me to that it's nothing a big deal. That's my way of calming myself down. It's like, no, it was fine. It was just a bunny. It was just a bunny. Everything's fine. But yeah, people bitch if you overreact, even though yeah. they don't understand the situation, and then they don't watch if you underreact. There's really no way to please them, so might as well do whatever we want. Yeah. 
I'm all for it. But I, th- I think we underreact quite a bit. As much as people have said that we overreact sometimes, I think we underreact to a lot of things that we should at least be calling out. Maybe not, re- maybe react is the wrong word, yeah. but, but we should be tagging more stuff. Talking about, hey, I feel uncomfortable in this. Not scared, but just, yeah. you know, I feel a certain way coming in here. But you're right. I don't want to be the well, pussy. We have the, the problem of during the investigation, nobody will say anything. And then we get in the car to leave and we start sharing stories of experiences and going, why didn't we talk about that while we were on site? And We're on camera, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's afraid they'll sound like an idiot. Yeah. I definitely didn't see two brads walking over there. The other the other problem is is we're a very audio focused group. Like we're we do really good EVP work. I, I've noticed. Like um, I, I mean, compared to other legitimate groups, not TV groups get EVPs because they fabricate them. Mm-hmm. But like other ones that are on our level, like that we've met, we probably have some of the best EVP work out there, especially with the way we do analyzation, and. Um, one of the things on my list is like talking during EVPs or, or being real bad about making noise during EVP sessions and things like that. But that's something we did like just immediately clicked when we were out in Yoakum. We immediately just got super good at it. And um, yeah, like from one investigation to the next. Oh, Julie says, why do you not record the car conversations? We'd have to bleep every other one. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, so I do have a dash cam now and I bought a bigger uh, memory card. I'm going to try it. The problem is, is when we're driving around, can't hear it. you can't hear it over the road noise. Yeah. It's, it's really bad. And also, now that I drive a smaller vehicle, we're not always all in the same vehicle anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody wants to buy us a mystery machine, um, I really want to invest in like some kind of Astro van or minivan or something for the group that we can put all the equipment in and set up like a a center. I'd be happy to record all those conversations and and all that. But I've tried, I've tried doing audio recordings in the car before and it, it never comes out real clear except one audio recording where I got locked on the outside and somebody was on the inside. Look, that was like six years ago. Can we stop talking about that? Never, so never. Fun. In fact, if we're talking about things that groups mess up or, or do badly, it's probably locking their, their investigators out of the car when they're being chased by demons. That might be. I th- didn't know that hitting the lock button on my door would lock the entire car. That's your car's fault. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> And we had been to that location before and found out that, A, the car was possessed. Yeah, it's... Or, or did that happen afterwards? I can't... That was the, the car... The, that was after. Yeah, where we got the best EVP on the planet. Oh, God. Yeah, that was afterward. So, you know, my car had never done that before. So maybe that was the location. Really like playing with the car locks. I don't know. What's your... What's, what's on your list besides... What's on my list? Yeah, my list is dumb. We're ta- um, done talking about human emotions. Let's get to the tech. No, I think those are good. Okay. Um, one of the things on my list, it, the I wanted to put these like in a like in in order, but I didn't get that far down the line. So, uh, the number one thing on my list was showing up late to investigations. This is something that Luis grew up not as a group like. Um, I'm usually pretty good about getting there at the scheduled time or whatever, but then we kind of stagger in late or, or or not necessarily like not showing up on time, but getting there just before the investigation. So we don't have a lot of time to do a lot of like the daytime recon mm-hmm. and stuff well, and like that. And sometimes there's no choice because certain group members have certain jobs. They have to work at different... I've right. got two kids. Like not all of this is stuff we do on purpose, but we did find it a lot easier when we got there a lot earlier. Yeah, so we had time to set up and get everything working. And- well, we have time to set up, make a plan, things like that. But when we show up just but like an hour before we're well, about to i always i always end up running into technical problems mm-hmm. that, that just get us further and further down the road and it causes frustration and it's it's just that that time period before and well and the other thing i noticed is if we show up a little early like we did the last time at hill house we got everything set up we went and had a meal we kind of sat and talked for a little body a while and then no one was particularly ramped up when it started yeah that helped with that quite a bit like quite a bit like I, I even had enough time to like set up, get frustrated about things not working 
get through it, get it done. And it wasn't even dark yet. Like we weren't even ready to roll tape mm-hmm. or anything like that. It would be great if we could always do that, but I know we can't. Yeah. Um, well, so my solution to it is, is I need to personally start showing up to whatever we're doing before everybody else. If everybody can't show up as early as me, like we, the, the problem is, is uh, our group has this real bad thing with FOMO. And so nobody wants anybody else in the group to show up before the other person for some reason. Yeah, that and stresses me out. I don't like it. I don't get that. It, I don't know. But I just assume that you're going to start doing some kind of weird new experiment where you set some booby traps up or something. Just something sneaky to pop out at you so that whenever we all show up, there's just Oh, I assume stuff. when I get there late that he's going to be like, oh, the shadow figure walked out. And it. it talked to me. And then it's never going to happen again. And it's going to be the one time I love You there. missed the that one true. full body. But I also see, be mad? I see a lot of groups do the same thing. They don't show up early enough to check out what the place looks like in the daytime, mm-hmm. um, or, or 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 at least before they've actually. Started. Yeah, yeah, like they like they don't they don't do base like they don't walk around and do baselines beforehand. They they just get there, kind of show up, or they or they let their group members just kind of show up whenever. And, and I get it. it. People have jobs and stuff like that, and you still include them, especially if if they contribute to your group financially well, and all, you know I mean, it's like fair, and i live but, in a different city so sometimes that's a hassle so i'm assuming other groups have the same but i do feel issues. in you know and, and of course none of these none of these are digs but i thought it was worth mentioning because your investigation does suffer from it it's it may be something you have to live with it there may be no way around it but i do see investigation suffering from it so if it's something that you know your group does Try to think of ways around it so that you don't fall kind of into that same trap. Because, like I said, it's kind of screwed us up. Like when we when we stagger or or like a few of us have to leave at a certain time, and but the but the person that's actually like running the thing gets there late. You're you're taking away from somebody else's time to actually be able to investigate with you. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes you have to cut it short, and then you leave way before you're ready for the investigation to actually be wrapped just because you got to be home and yeah, and also it's a strain on your client too mm-hmm. like, like if they get frustrated with you because you can't show up on time and things like that that can cause a problem but like i said these weren't in a particular order that was supposed to be like dead last on my list that's that's the the most forgivable We're thing on the I countdown think. now uh, this one is a hundred percent on me, and that is uh, forgetting to charge equipment and leaving equipment behind. It seems every goddamn investigation we go on, I've either left something behind, or I have forgot to charge something that is just crucial. And um, you know, past the obvious reasons of oh, now you can't use that piece of equipment or whatever, it it takes away from any kind of like standardized process that you use. So like if it's, if it's your thermal camera and you're like, well, we'll just have to do this one without thermal. Right. But if we use that on every single investigation to debunk a certain thing or to validate a certain thing, then it's like driving your car while it's missing a wheel. You know, it's just, it's never right. So there's no consistency to the yeah the investigations um, at that point. And I, I've seen that with other groups, too. Like, when we go out for, like, the public investigations, you're like, oh, shit, I forgot to charge up my EMF detector. Or um, I, I don't or, – or they leave something behind, you know, and it, it becomes this, like, big expensive thing, and, the, and that expense hits, like, the rest of the group. I don't know. That one's kind of weak, too. That's why we're in countdown mode. Number eight. <laughs> Uh, the other one, I guess, kind of went along with what I was saying is not and this one is a big one, not documenting the location uh, before the investigation and taking baseline reading. So you can play the game. Did the trash can move? That's exactly what I was thinking about when I thought of that one. And um, I hate that game. Luckily, do you lu- ever look for any physical evidence? I'm not entirely certain what that means. What that- I'm going to need more specificity. I mean, we take a doll with us, and we're like, where did the ghost touch you? To the house? Or you mean, like, literal things moving? Like, the time the trash can we thought moved? Yeah, and that was the one that came to mind. And luckily, your dad had taken a picture of that room yeah. before... But that was just we, luck. Yeah, that yeah. was luck. And th- and that's something I think we can definitely improve on, is we need to take nine or ten pictures with the lights on of every room. Oh, she means, like, ectoplasm. No. <laughs> mm. No. 
I'm sure if we found something super weird, we would document it. But a, a lot of people have documented ectoplasm, you know. And we were at Yoakum, the place we were talking about. I mean, the walls were leaking anyway. Yeah. So the black mold and the stalactites. And that that place was made of ectoplasm yeah, and black look. mold. Um, no. I always wonder about that. To be honest, the ectoplasm thing, because so many people have documented like, oh, there was ectoplasm there. I'm like, was there? But um, there was something Did, we are watched. Are you sure and you it was didn't just the, wipe your sweaty hand on the wall? There was there was something we were watching where it was like on the blinds, like the blinds were sweating and the person touched them and they ended up with the, like this real bad burn. Yeah, they were talking about it was like a chemical burn afterwards. And I was like, that's really weird. It like, sounds you, like they got a chemical burn from something someone had spilled Yeah, on the blinds. I mean, a cleaning was, agent. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I know most of the ectoplasm pictures from. You know the Victorian era during the the no. spiritual movement. Most of that shit was faked. But anyway, yeah, we need to take pictures of every room and all the things. But I see that with a lot of other groups too. That's the other reason I mentioned well, the it. The other not question just is, is: Are they not taking the pictures, or are they not showing them because they're not applicable? I think they're always at. I think any time. Okay, so like a good example is our George's Creek picture. We have before and after, blah, blah, blah. It's always important. And we try to do it. Like, it's not like we forget to do it or whatever. We just, we could do it better. better. And I think every group could do it better. Um, not just know. still pictures, but take video of the whole place. Mm -hmm. Like, do a, a straight walkthrough. Hold your camera on every room for like a minute. Document where every single thing is. And um, I hate seeing groups not take emf readings before oh john the investigation john says the blinds thing was in that demon house thing oh, he thinks. That, oh yeah yeah that was in the amon's haunting thing I, I remember looking at it and they're like there was some weird film on the blinds in in like some lady touched it and i was like yeah like blinds get condensation on it but then they were like yeah and then she had like well and jen says lead poisoning blinds used to be made of lead but lead poisoning is usually like it's pretty rare you're going to get a rash, from, I guess, unless you have an allergy, which is possible. That's a really specific allergy. Well, and you can be allergic to anything. Well, and usually heavy metals have to build up in your system, too. For but, like, to, uh, gold, I'm allergic to that if I put gold, are you allergic to gold piercings gold? in. Gold? I don't get what you're doing. No, you don't like that. What okay. is he talking Never about? Mind. I was going to say, um, though, I think that a lot of groups that don't take the pictures or whatever is because it would invalidate their own stuff. Like, for example, using our own thing with the trash can. You had a moment. We looked at the pictures. We realized, never mind, that was already there. And so on our thing, we said, hey, never mind. That's fine. Oh, but we but could with, have said. But other groups might have said, well, let's just not share the fact that that was already there. And it will just be an experience. I, I. <sighs> I guess that's the difference between TV. I don't know, but like I like in our case, I still use the footage though. Like yeah. in our episode, I, I still kick the trash can, and I'm more like, "What the hell? Why is that there?" Blah 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 blah. And then like in the next, you know, minute of that part of the episode, it's like we debunk the trash yeah. can, and I don't understand why why People everybody shies point. away from that. Our Julie says nicotine, like from smokers. I don't see why that would give anyone a rash. I guess, but not just from doing that. I mean. But once again, you can be allergic to anything. You know what it could have been? It could have been um, that stuff asps leave behind. Oh, gross. Because they're basically like snails they don't, no, they're or whatever. Not. They don't leave anything behind. Don't they? No. No? Unless they leave their tiny little prickly furs behind. Yeah, they're, they're poisons in their fur. Poison fur. Venom. Venom fur. Venomous fur. <laughs> they're adorable and cute, but they're... Venomful. But they're not for pets. Not for pets. <laughs> no. Well, That's a mistake. So <laughs> do not pet the fuzzy, fuzzy caterpillar. But I do okay. agree that we should we should take more, more pictures, pictures and more videos of just before anything even starts. And more audio. Kind of gonna, yeah. I, I think I think taking audio before too to see like um. Well, having a baseline of noise is good too because then oh that's just the flagpole clinking that's been going on all night as opposed to oh that's new banging yeah well and also you can tell you know like how soundproof a room is like how easy it is to pick up sounds that are outside like you should put a recorder in the house and then go outside and like talk and you have a conversation and go yeah. back inside and see if it picks up your conversation mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody else do that 
We did um, that with the uh, the box you had made just to see how it would work. But I oh yeah, but I was testing that box specifically. Yeah. Um, but people should do that with all their equipment. And, and I feel like it was a good idea, but we were only halfway there with the technology. Yeah. It was it was still picking up. Some it was stuff an on attempt. Yeah, yeah. I need to get made. more. I need to get more uh, soundproof material in a better box and stick a recorder in it and, and do that. That would be a thing. No more. Seven? Seven? Six? Seven? Are we on seven? I lost track. I think we're on seven. <laughs> yeah, Six? we're on seven. Number seven. Uh, not discussing a game plan or schedule for an investigation. So um, I come up with itineraries and you guys don't care. We mock you. I read them, but there's uh, this, so much This to one is specific. Of. You guys suck at game I, plans. I read them. I read them, but there's just so much to remember and there's so little time. And there's details. so much to laugh at. Yeah. And that's why it's written down. It's just you don't too have much. to remember it. It's, it's, like a, it's in a three ring it? binder. Oh my god, with, you're so fucking with pictures. Anal retentive. Well, the problem is I I don't learn by reading. So when I read this and I go, I don't know what the hell he wants. No, <laughs> it, this is something we actually don't screw up anymore. Uh, I'm making fun, like y'all don't yeah. read it or whatever. We actually do follow a pretty good game plan now. But I remember, yeah. um, At the I beginning. think this is I think this is more aimed towards uh, groups when they're starting out because we did this when we started out. We would just show up. And be like, okay, what do you want to do next? Uh, let's try recordings. Okay, let's try EMF readings or whatever. E- you know, just kind of going off the cuff, which is kind of okay if you're ghost hunting. But if you're trying to do any kind of like structured investigation, you need to know, okay, we're going to work through this area like counterclockwise. And we're going to start with like our audio, you know. Yeah, we're going to do this and then this and then this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that way everybody kind of knows what to expect. And everybody's not working over each other because when you don't have a good game plan um, and you got like two different groups trying to do like audio stuff at the same time, um, you know, like, well, we figured that out real quick at Yoakum. We, had, we were like, okay, this is a big place. We'll have a group yeah, downstairs first and floor, a group. On the second floor, but it had to be and one on the first floor and one on the third floor. And, and even that was causing Echo. some contamination um, because of the, the elevator shaft. Lisa says, what about equipment like other groups use? Do, do you do bunk and use? It depends on the equipment. We've debunked like, things like the spirit box. Uh, the, the poor, well, we haven't really yeah. debunked the spirit box. It's just iffy at best. We detuned yeah. ours. Yeah. But like the portal that other yeah. groups use. So we, we didn't... Okay, well, I'll stop We use that. equipment. We just... Yeah, yeah. So the the spirit box isn't debunked, but there's holes in the logic yeah. mm-hmm. that they tell you on TV or, or, the, or the... I can't remember who manufactures it. I think it's... ITC technologies or something like that, but but they tell you that because it's going through channels and you get voices on separate channels, you should be able to hear like an entire sentence. That's what makes it scientifically valid, and that that's not true at all. I mean, I, I haven't disproved that ghosts don't talk through radio frequencies but or whatever. If you've noticed, but, we all have watched or listened to radios be on multiple bandwidth at the same time. It bleeds over. Right. Uh, so the fact that it's scanning and you get like a full sentence or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. You may you can get the same result leaving it on a channel and it's just as valid is the other way because it'll... Now, we don't use like ghost hunting apps no, never. Like, because those are dodgy. Things on your phone. You just... Yeah. Well, they're just word banks is what yeah. it is. And, and then some of them will activate your mic so that it can hear what's being said in the room so that it can repeat, repeat so one of the words back. back so it sounds more relevant. I never trust anything. See, we used to in the beginning. Like, when we first got I started. I think they're fun, but I don't think they're applicable. So like, I don't they're try hilarious to do sometimes, though. I don't trust anything that's marketed as ghost hunting equipment. Because, mm-hmm. cause like, you know, like, when we first got our, when I first got my first EMF detector or whatever, I had to buy a Mel meter. I was like, this is the most accurate meter on the planet, blah, blah. It's just a, an EMF detector. There's nothing special about it except it's got a temperature control thing on it. And it's like fifty five extra dollars. I mean, like I says, but the ghost manipulate your phone. Got, that's what confuses me. I can barely work my phone half the time. How does the how's, ghost from yeah, eighteen hundred? How does Captain Ghost from eighteen seventeen messing with my phone <laughs> and making it pop out the right word? I don't think. I don't think so. I yeah, don't, I don't like, think so. Uh, like, that ghost doesn't know what that is. He's confused. He thinks it's a paperweight. <laughs> it, 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 I don't know. Like, yeah, how does the ghost know how to make the the right word pop? Out well, because I played with uh, when Haiti came down 
and she had the like separate portal thing. Oh, she had the ovulus. Okay, whatever. But I like messed with it and it would pop out words, but there was no way I could mess with that to make it pop out any specific word. They're just slapping their hand. I mean, what? I don't get it. I don't get the logic. I don't. It blows my mind. The, I, the thought is, is they're ethereal and that they can go into the circuitry. And, they, and the ghost from 1817, it knows how to manipulate complex electronics on a tiny scale. That's the that's the theory. Okay, well, your theory's stupid. <laughs> it's not my theory. That's their theory. Oh, my God. My theory is it's dumb. Good. My theory is it fucking but, spits out words until you go, you, oh, shit. By you, I meant them. <laughs> okay. Um, Whoever is making all the money off of these apps. I do, I, like, sometimes I like popping it out to play with it, but... They are hilarious sometimes. They've said some dirty <laughs> words that I kept repeating. It I, was very funny. But. I guess if you had a session and it gave you, like, an an, an like an answer that answered the question over and over and over, I might be more inclined to go, that's interesting. Well, no, I but wouldn't even do that because it could be listening, listening to, to your mic and But, but the thing is, questions. is, like, if, it, if I asked one of those amps, what is my grandmother's name? And it spit out my grandmother's name. Like it was not mentioned in. Yeah, then I might be. I would go, "Holy shit!" That's what I meant. That's a thing. Yeah, but But that's never happened. But I'm like, but if I'm like, do you like bananas or oranges or apples? And it goes bananas. I don't. I'm like, whatever. If you use the listening tech and algorithm Facebook uses for its ads in a ghost hunting app, you can make good money. (laughs) True. Emilio is onto something. He is. <laughs> Get he, on it, man. You just got to find that wish marketing uh, oh God. algorithm and then just apply that to a ghost hunting app. And it's like, hey, ghost, um, you know, I was just here, uh, you know, to talk to you. What do you think? I think you're shopping for dildos on your spare time. <laughs> oh, my God. Welcome How to Wish <laughs> with its weird, weird ads. <laughs> It keeps trying to sell me these devices to get my foreskin back. <laughs> it's so weird. And I don't know. I don't know. It what. sent me gimp, gimp suits last time. <laughs> I was scrolling through Facebook and there was just a giant gimp suit. And it said it was like for birthday parties. <laughs> Are you serious? I've got, best birthday. I've got some weird sex dolls on there. I got, getting I've, the plush, uh, the big penis plush. What is wrong repeatedly. with Wish? That's a whole podcast. Oh, yeah. I, is, and that's a conspiracy thing, is your computer listening to you. By the way, it's not. It goes off of the a only, completely different The algorithm. only time it actually freaked me out is when me and you were planning on going to Colorado and I had not posted anything about it. I had not Googled anything about it, and Facebook started sending me Explore Colorado ads. I was like, mm. I know how it's doing that, though. You've been to Colorado a ton of times. You've posted a ton of times that Colorado is your favorite freaking place in the world. It's just guessing. And it's around the time that you normally have enough money to go travel or do something. So I it's just wish like, ads for chicken helmets and pipes. <laughs> it lots of lots of meth pipes on Wish yeah. and bongs and crack pipes. Chicken helmets? Yeah, what the... What I'm going to need chi- you to post a picture I, of a chicken helmet, please. I, I need... It. Chicken. I imagine it's a helmet you put on a chicken, or it's a human helmet that with a like chicken, chicken on it. That looks like a chicken. Either one is fucking comedy gold. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I've got all these chickens, and they're really aggressive, so I had to buy these <laughs> little helmets. helmets to put on them to, to make my chicken football team. <laughs> or, for whatever reason, you need a helmet, but it needs to look like a chicken. Or have a giant decal of a chicken on it. Maybe. I don't know. It's just awesome. It feels like a thing Allie would want. I think no, I don't care. Fuck hey, them. Next thing. <laughs> next thing. No, got off I, on chicken helmets. I was talking more about debunking the equipment, uh, though, because I mean, I, I think I think one of the things, and she's got a point, is um, a lot of other groups they just buy whatever's off the shelf. Because I mean, I, I, all the little ghost hunts we walk on and stuff like that, you know, another group will they show. They got up. the boo bear. They 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 got the goddamn boo bear. It's adorable, but. It's I, you know what I like the idea behind that pac- Pacific Pacific that Pacific ghost hunting thing. I think Jananit uh, came up with a Pacific idea for Boo Bear. No, okay. No, <laughs> um, no, I like that one. Like if you, if you think there's a little kid ghost, take a toy that you know lights up when you touch it in a weird place. It's. I thought it was just an EMF detector. I thought it was just a fancy EMF detector. I think it's also a vibration detector, uh-huh. maybe. But yeah, it just it lights up. I, I like that one. I don't I don't know that it proves anything because EMF 
detectors just light up for no reason whatsoever. If you shake them a little bit like this, they go, ah! But I see a lot of other groups, they'll just buy something off the shelf because it says it detects ghosts. Like, um, nothing against paranologies, but I see a bunch of people buy, like, the little paranologies things, and they're like, oh, yeah, there's got to be a ghost nearby because this thing just, like, lights up and, and, and makes a dog whistle noise. And you're like, well, why? Well, I don't know, because they don't, they don't really understand what they're measuring. They don't understand the equipment. And a lot of that stuff, if it's marketed to catch ghosts... I hate to break it to you, but it's made up. It's probably just got some kind of sensor that senses some kind of environmental change randomly. It could be freaking anything. It's probably anything. also the same thing as either an EMF detector or a vibration detector, just way more expensive and with flashy lights. Well, it's like um, I bought a bunch of those little cat toys. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I bought them is because they said they had an accelerometer in them. They do not, by the way. Mm. Um, but I wanted to get something that was a vibration detector. It still works for that, but it does not have an accelerometer in it. It's got a, uh, a a dip switch inside of it. But if something vibrates, it the little ball will light up. What? Chicken helmet. It's a helmet for chickens. Uh, so that you can be a chicken rider? I just thank you for that. What if you're a chicken jockey? Like, is are there chicken races and they need these? I don't know, but that's awesome. Is there some kind of full contact chicken league? Uh, the, these are all things I need to know about. Oh, uh, Amelia says the paranormal flashlight that ghosts can turn on and off. Oh, yeah. Isn't that just a flashlight? Flashlight where you have to do the button? Yeah. <laughs> See, I hate any test like where it's watching, like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have this technology like. I like half watching on Emilio half and half Carlos go off on the flashlight. Yeah. Then. I liked watching them go off on a group of uh, tourists. <laughs> on the flashlight experiment that was carlos is the best on that because he's just like i'm gonna wring your fucking neck if i see you do this he's just so angry about it um righteous anger <laughs> but yeah definitely beware anything that is marketed as a is a ghost hunting what was thing. the one that had all the something that was made out of a video game oh you mean like the little stick figure dude you see where it's like the Kinect thing? Yeah, the XLS camera. And somebody was asking me about that the other day. And the thing is, okay, so they're taking an Xbox 360 or now... Oh, that's Lisa asked the same thing. What about the things that show the stick figure anomaly? It's just doing a spatial relation, isn't it? Right. So I'm not going to go into an in-depth explanation, but think about this. They released it for the Xbox 360 for Kinect Move games, right? And they don't work half the time because it has a really oh, yeah, hard time... Connect. It has a hard time tracking a human being in a fully lit room, and it still screws up. Why the fuck is it going to detect a ghost? There's nothing in there. Maybe it's it was only specifically that. made for ghosts, and it doesn't detect humans. Apparently, chickens are cannibals, and that that's, is true. That's fucking metal, man. <laughs> that is so metal. Why do y'all think? Okay, why do y'all thinking doesn't work? What? Yeah, I think he was talking about the the thing he's just talking about. What the XLS camera? Yeah. Because I can I can trick the XLS camera just with lighting. And the fact that they're using it in a complete Okay, so first off, when you're using it to play a video game with it, it says do this in a fully lit room. Yeah. Because all the shadows screwed up because it, it has one camera that's an IR camera and it has one camera that's an actual camera. And that's how it checks depth between the two and, and distinguishes colors. If you turn off all the lights in the room, only the IR camera on it is able to see anymore. It loses its ability to actually track depth correctly. And what it's doing is it takes five points and it, five ran, it's constantly scan, it, it, like facial recognition or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's constantly scanning for five points that meet a certain ratio. And then it connects them and turns them into a person. It's 100% random. So unless it's something that shows up simply on IR footage in a two-dimensional space because remember it can't use that second camera to properly map anymore which is really important for mapping human figures um, and it's only in that IR spectrum if it's something you can't see with your human eye there's no reason that camera would also be able to pick it up it's just picking up random points you can point it at like pictures of people, or that's like it'll map you ever them. look at your wall and you're like, "Oh, that looks like a face in yeah. the drywall." It's cameras are cameras and computers are more prone to pareidolia than your brain is, because it's constantly scanning for like a math algorithm to do it. 
you just look at something, it might look like a person, but you can look at it and logic it away. You can be like, oh no, that's just my mind playing tricks. The computer can't do that in, unless it's got really advanced AI. And Xbox 360 and Xbox One does not have really advanced AI. Um, I mean, this is honestly, if they can't see dark skin t- tones, makes sense. It messes up with shadows. Yeah. B- basically, what I was saying, like if you're using the dark and um, you pan it over a dark person, a person of color, it doesn't work as well. Did y'all see the video of the guy switching between the three Kinect cameras and catches a shadow figure in one? I haven't seen that. No, but I, I question anything where you're switching between cameras rapidly. Well, I, we'd have I, to see how they I'd did have to it. look yeah. at it, but if it's but what I'm thinking about. It doesn't head, like come across Facebook or anything. Or... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you got a link to that, Emilio. Uh, kind of like when the Snapchat filter picks up nothing and, turn, uh, and turns it into a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see those all the time, too. People use Snapchat as a ghost hunting device. They're like, look, it turned my staircase into a puppy dog. A, a ears puppy and, a dog. and I'm like, so? It's just a thing that happens. Yeah, she was are saying we, the same thing. Uh, are we on the stuff. next one, or are we still on this one? Oh, I thought you were telling me to read it. Oh, comment. no. Uh, too many people active during experiments. We've been better about that. We've been taking smaller groups. Hey. Well, it depends yeah. on the location, too. Yeah. If it's a three-story building, well, you even, might need four people. Yeah. Yeah. Yoakum was enormous, but even with just because of that elevator shaft being able to hear everybody, it was still too many people. Okay, so uh, there is something to be said about, oh, we're trying to cover more ground. And it, it depends on what the goal of your investigation is. So with us, we're trying to be scientifically valid. Others are just trying to, you know, validate for themselves or to a certain degree, right? Mm -hmm. Um, If you're group B that I was talking about, um, you still don't want big groups because you want it to be more valid, but you can have big groups. Um, We really, really, really need to tighten up and just have like two people in an area like at all, like period, and like nobody else talking because there's there's no, as much as we're trying there's nothing that we do that is scientifically valid mm-hmm. because any source of contaminant it doesn't matter if it was outside or it's like oh we know Allie's in the other room so we know she didn't do it or well it's it still doesn't matter like if we if we were trying to present that to any kind of critical panel it, it's not going to hold up because they're going to say you don't have control over your experiment that's just that's just how the cards lie and so for what we're trying to do, where we're almost having to try to take non-lab conditions and make them lab conditions, more than one person or more than two people is too many people. Mm-hmm. And outside isn't valid at all. There's nothing we can do outside that will ever, ever be valid. Because there will always be some animal or yeah. some There's, there's some always wind. an amount of no control. Mm-hmm. And even in a house, it's still almost not valid because we can't guarantee that the house is 100% soundproof unless we spend six months soundproofing the house. It's, it's just something that we'll never, ever get to. But with Group B, where you can have more people or whatever, still more than like two or three people, it's, it's not... It's too many because you're going to contaminate each other. What is going on? What? No, I'm I'm hurting for show material here. What but, is happening? Uh, oh, Ali says we should take a shot every time you say like. It's our new drinking like, game. Like, like. Oh, you were on that kick for a little yeah, while too. I was seeing it constantly. I had to stop it. It was bad. How did you stop? I need to. I just paid attention, and every time I said it, I you know Slap called myself yourself. an idiot. Shun yourself, idiot. <laughs> like idiot. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't know. I I was really bad for a while. I don't remember you ever being like that. I remember it was, Allie. Saying it was it only a couple days. Words. That's funny because he blamed Allie about it the other day too. When he he's like, "Oh, I'm turning into Allie." I'm like, "Oh no, <laughs> poor Allie." I hope she doesn't like, listen to this episode. Do you know? Like, we love you, Allie. If you're watching this, I don't. You I'm just kidding. Like <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> shit got dark. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's okay. They are BFDs. Oh, my God. She's watching Bill and Ted right now. That's why she's not here. Why? I don't know. 
I want to watch it. We still have more hurting for show stuff. We can watch more lists. You freaking announced the next one. Yeah, you're like, God. You you run something. I'm tired of hearing my own voice. God, me too. Number six. Number five. Number five. Which one did we do last? Number five. Why are you throwing stuff at me? Because you're being mean to me, and I don't like it. <laughs> um, didn't we already do all these? What? No, maybe, maybe. I was down oh. to too many people in a look at. But did y'all have any comments on that? Like, how can we improve or whatever? We Smart. just did too many people active during an investigation. So talking and making noise during EVP session without tagging. Oh, I handed that off to you at the perfect time. I didn't even know that was the next one. There's a there's a thing you do during our EVP sessions that you're banned from doing now. What is that? What is that? Is that is that a ghost? If you'll note, Yoakum and Hill House. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. In the last warehouse one, I did not do it a single time. <laughs> you've you've gotten better. But, I left it in my but, pocket every time we did EVPs. <laughs> I did. I'm proud of me. It's completely silent. You know what? I used. To, uh, I used to try to be really uh, tolerant of it or whatever until we just started. We got blasted a bunch over it. And people were just like, this is ridiculous. And, like, I wanted to be like, man, you don't know what it is. And, and then I was like, they're right. They're really right. We should not be doing – we shouldn't be fiddling with shit while we're trying to do EVP. We are better Well, that one's it. impossible. I know. And, and, and I'll give you credit. You did, you did better on the last one. But – we can always do better, and we move around too much. It's especially bad when you're outside, like if you're standing on gravel or something like that. But there's we really have, no way to not there have, We did do the thing now, though, before we start, was we, we say everybody plant. Yeah. Everybody like specific EVB ca- sessions we've gotten, but like in between, especially if we're trading between a bunch of stuff. Like everybody's digging through their pockets. How we, else do we, you do we that? probably shouldn't. We, we should probably just do the, you know, like one person should hold a camera, one person should hold an EMF detector, and one person should do that, and you shouldn't be juggling anything around. Uh, the other thing we've got, we used to be really good about this, but the thing we've gotten really lax about is not tagging. Um, yeah. Because I, cause I think we're so focused in on not interrupting the silence because we're looking for that EVP, but we really need to start tagging stuff as soon as it happens. Yeah, my problem always is if we're in com- what is mostly silence and somebody shifts and then goes right back to silence, I don't want to interrupt the and latter then you tag and more- yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, so. and it's it's real hard. It's a hard call. It's Maybe really hard. Maybe we should hard. start doing like a hand signal or something when we The problem tag. is you don't hear that on the audio. Yeah. Yeah, and in and in in we're not always reviewing the video and the True. audio at the same time. The other thing I don't always know is, okay, so we asked the question, and I counted to six Mississippis, and then someone shifted. Do I go back and ask the question? Yeah. Or do I go to the next one? It is kind of difficult to. Well, in, we were watching something earlier, and you had made a. And like this always irritates you when people are doing EVP sessions and they don't do the five count like we are, because you're like, oh I, my God. you're like I I thought that the point was the silence in between, but they just kind of like kept going like a conversation, and it it, it brought up a good point because um. Sometimes the EVPs, they come, like, in the middle of those, it, like, the real short breaks because it's more, like, conversational. And I don't know if that's a better, worse approach or, or just I think it's equal. different in something to do alongside. Yeah, I, I think we should... Fo- I, I'm, I really like our five-second rule of trying to be totally silent because it gives us a chance to say, okay, we know nothing we did was in this five second period that's good it feels like two different experiments yeah mm-hmm. um but i do feel like there should be times when we just kind of talk it off, it, it, yeah. rattle it off maybe we shouldn't be moving or whatever but i i think definitely in that experiment like if if we're just talking and talking and in and, and, and not waiting as long or whatever or maybe we're talking to each other too but if we hear if we shift or we move or we make some kind of noise that's other than just or our face holes making the noise it needs to be tagged immediately mm-hmm. when we're doing the five seconds in between experiment wait the five seconds and before the and then at the end of the five seconds say hey while that was going on i heard this thing okay that 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 might be a better way to run that i'm, I'm glad we hashed that out live <laughs> for everybody to it, it does a, a, another in, uh, experiment, though, because we can try two different forms. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? You need to have conversations. Like, if you're on a team, have conversations like that with your team. Don't just decide 
you know, this is how we're going to do it. Or I mean, maybe you need to in the very beginning just to get started or whatever. But like, I like how we just did that. Like we had a conversation and I asked your input and kind of threw an idea out there and you guys think it's good. Right. He's acting like this is a not a democracy and not a dictatorship. Don't believe him. There's a little bit He's of a, a liar. Liar. <laughs> He rules with an iron fist. You should you know you're the lead investigator. He now. shocks us with cattle prods when we're bad. <laughs> and when you're good. Call the police. <laughs> Please help. Go back to your shed. <laughs> Don't wanna <laughs> No water for you tonight. Oh. <laughs> Not verbalizing how you're feeling. We already kind of talked about this one. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's important we start talking about, okay, so I think other groups probably do it better than we do, actually. Yeah. Like, way better. Because they're more interested in feelings as evidence. But even if you're not counting your feelings as evidence, you need to be talking about it. Because it could be pertinent later. Mm-hmm. But, but we just, we completely ignore that what nothing it's a comment you just your mom said she thought i was smoking dope on the investigations and i said i am and Brittany said share question mark if i had any i would are you smoking dope on our investigation nah, sadly that i feel like i get a lot more ghosts yeah but i feel like the uh, the voicing your uh, your yeah. emotions at the time is good also because we do have a habit of we don't say anything then we get in the car and we start sharing experiences and realize that we've had some shared things and then we start to wonder did i make that up because they just said it and then i think it would also be more helpful for our uh, case reporter who's listening in on very... all the conversations so <laughs> she's not just like hey did you feel scared uh, it also yeah. helps with the theory of that uh, ghost activity makes you anxious yeah. yeah. If you feel anxious, then you see something, or you see something, or something is on camera, but you didn't see it, and then you feel anxious for no good reason, would have some sort of correlation. Well, it's like the thing we saw where um, so-and-so was acting weird, and then you see the orb fly into him, and orbs are stupid. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it. We all agree. But it is kind of interesting in some of those cases when somebody just suddenly starts acting a certain way, or some sort of event kind of happens, and then you see the orb mm -hmm. go into it. Like they're not related. The same thing with the emotion thing. Because here's the deal. Even if I thought I was being possessed on an investigation, I probably wouldn't act like it or fucking tell anybody because it's so ridiculous. Crazy, yeah. It's so dumb. But here, but that's here's the thing. That's how we get the, uh, the, the, the goat man. Is that what the thing? It, yeah. That's but, how we get him in the car because it looks like Brad, but it's not acting like Brad. But here's a nuts <laughs> thing. So say in that same scenario, like I'm feeling like really anxious or something like that. and on, But I don't say anything. On the video, you see a weird shadow like move behind me and into me or around me or something like that. And you're sitting there watching the video and you're trying to decide, well, is that just a camera trick or whatever, right? But if I'm also verbalizing that at that exact moment in time while I'm not seeing that thing happen, I felt cold. That, that, man, I, I just suddenly feel cold or I hear a whisper in my ear, something that doesn't show up. Suddenly that shadow takes on a, a completely new, it, it may not necessarily be 100% valid, but it does. It takes on a new light where it kind of raises an eyebrow. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So it, it is. Whereas before we we thought being in my head, I always thought being objective meant not being emotionally invested in it, and not using your emotions as evidence. And and I'm kind of going back on what I thought. I think that's wrong. I think I think I think you need to find a good balance. Well, and it is true that I mean your body is wired to sense danger. Mm -hmm. That's like. Spider-Man? Fight or flight response. Uh, yeah, like fight or flight response. <laughs> if something changes in where you are, you're, you need to be aware of it because it could be a lion. Well, we don't know. It, it's like when a storm is coming. You can feel when a storm's coming from the pressure drop, and, and you don't really know why you feel that sometimes. You know, it, like there's an environmental factor in it, but you feel it before you... He's yeah. using an example from the medical show we were just watching. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> no one likes you. Um, Julie says, Kristen, do you ever have experiences that don't get recorded? Most of mine do get recorded. Uh, there was one before we had finished setting up equipment, so it didn't get recorded, and that was at Yoakum. And we had talked about it before because I was sitting down in the first floor with the headset on and just watching the camera. I know it affected her because she's going back to Arkansas. It's not talk. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in the floor and then we love you. <laughs> no, it was I talked to you about it. I was 
in the control room. I had the headset on, and we were kind of testing the the mic that you had set up on. Oh, the, I think the you attorney. heard something walking around, right? I was hearing something making like the noise, and it was really creepy. And I said, what's going on on that floor? Because I didn't have film yet. And you had gone up there and flipped on the camera, and we didn't see anything. And I said, well, at least we have it on recording. You said, actually, it's not recording yet. And I said, shit. And that's the only one that hasn't been caught, though. Yeah. And that was, you know, could have been a door just going. Well, and, then, and there was the time when we were in Arlington. That took you back to Arkansas. It did. That was excellent. That was a technical malfunction. And I was worried I had broken your camera because I was in the pitch ass dark. And it said, would you like to retrieve your footage? And I was like, oh, <laughs> Brad. I kind of, I, I thought a light went out on you or something. At the I was same time. in the bathroom and it was completely black in there. And the only light that I had was coming oh, from the camera. Oh, it was the camera and the camera and the went camera off. The camera went off. And gotcha. And then whenever I got it turned back on, it said, would you like to retrieve? So I ran down the stairs and went, <laughs> And Tan says, you might not want to use the word experiment so loosely. There's a difference between evaluations of research methodology and evidence recording. God, gotta make it so, uh <laughs> <laughs> Read it. Think. You okay, Brad? Yeah. No, I mean, he is right. Yeah. But, yeah, there's... There's differences. We're just using layman's. That's funny. There's funner. difference. I mean, <laughs> when, when I'm talking about an experiment, I'm talking about when we set up, like, a controlled, like, session of something and we're trying to get a specific thing. When we make a hypothesis. And but we when we just, like, leave stuff running to try to capture evidence, that's just evidence. But it's, it, but none of it's proof because there, there's not there's not yeah. enough controls in any of it. It is not a controlled experiment unless we have a space to use, which is controlled. Control, yeah, yeah, something that we know is soundproof, where we know the temperature and the airflow, and we know someone's not going to walk in or mess with it. It can only really truly be considered a controlled experiment if we've controlled every aspect of it to allow for only a certain amount of variables that are like expected or not expected and just any of the places we go there's no there's the, no the, way that's, that's why no one where is close to scientifically valid as yes, you can get while is, you're hunting freaking ghosts is you can get right now <laughs> you know like um I, I think the coolest ones we do is like our, our orb debunking experiment that, that's probably like one of the most valid things um the the way we do our evps is is really good with the way we analyze frequencies not that it's yeah. not that it can't be contaminated but we're we're ruling out more it would be really cool to have a space though to do like more controlled experiments it would that be, would be so cool in other words it would be great to have a haunted lab yes <laughs> if someone could so we just have to a buy a lab, lab and then we have to murder 26 people i volunteer as tribute <laughs> someone procure us a haunted lab now see we can do controlled experiments with like um our emf bombardment experiments with like the the eeg device and the infrasound bombardment and stuff like that like physical experiments to see how we can alter the environment to create a paranormal experience that's not paranormal we can do that but going out and doing, you know, the fi the field research, yeah, it's, it's it is it's really hard to do anything that could truly be considered controlled. I don't see how that would even work. It, it's the it's, it's got to evolve. the The methodology has to evolve. But we just we haven't got to that point yet because people are still like, are EMFs ghosts? Do EMFs cause ghosts or do EMFs get you paranoid? No one knows. No, yeah. it, it's is the energy causing the ghosts or the ghosts feeding off your energy or yeah or are there no such thing as ghosts? Yeah. And uh, I'm going with answer D. D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, bad camera technique for getting to document what you are seeing. Okay, I see. Okay, I, what I was talking about there because it feels like a repeat of the other one. No, um, I was specifically talking about um, our early stuff. And what I see a lot of other groups do. So uh, I think the problem is, is price point. Like we bankroll our own stuff or whatever. So a lot of, a lot of like local groups and stuff like that down at a certain level can only afford one or two cameras. So they don't have any like static camera shots or whatever. It's a lot of it is all hand, like notice most of the evidence usually shows up on some kind of handheld and they'll be walking around with it kind of swinging it around it's not focused real well 
And a lot of times they're looking around the room, but they're not pointing the camera at what they're looking at. And they'll be calling around, oh, I saw something over here. And then they'll, you know, so it's always real dodgy with the handheld stuff. And the way I've always, the way I started doing our things is my handheld stuff isn't necessarily trying to get evidence. That's just to document us looking for the ghost. Like I'm filming us when I do that. The, 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 the cameras that we use to actually try to capture video evidence, they're all static cameras. Um, but it is really rough. And, and that's, it's kind of what I was getting at is, is uh, a lot of people that just get a handheld camera and they go out there and they're like, it's just point and shoot or whatever. And they just put it in auto mode and they run around. But um, if you have any choice in the matter, um, like our stuff got a lot better when your dad started helping us because we have somebody that is an experienced camera operator that knows what they're doing. And it, it made a big difference in mm -hmm. like how much stuff we, like we started capturing significantly less bull crap on our handheld camera because somebody knew what they were doing. And I'm not bad with a camera. Like I'm a good photographer. I'm oh, a good I'm video. Terrible with a camera. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, camera. but, but I am admittedly like a hundred percent self taught, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's not as good as somebody that is like a professional video. Well, yeah, uh, Emilio says y'all are investigating and recording. The big TV shows have dedicated film crews that have more freedom with angles. Yeah, but we also we're, we're never going to be at that level. It's just unless we get real famous. Oh, please right. don't! I do. I would not. Like that. Let's not do that. We, we probably own more cameras than some of those people now, though. But but also, if you have one cameraman, that's one thing. If you have three, you're seeing a lot more. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess what I'm saying is just more like static cameras, um, because like anything, if you're moving it, it's a variable, um, and you can't anything that shows up on just your handheld footage doesn't hold up really well as evidence because it could really be anything. Because Motion blur. yeah, because your your camera can't focus. I mean, I don't care how good your camera is, it can't really focus all the time as well as it could. So that shadow really just could just be a shadow that you're not realizing. Um, but I like the stuff I see that's on one of the static or if it's captured by multiple angles at the same time. But yeah, it, it, is, it is cost prohibitive. I think it's a cost prohibitive thing. I say the next one is funny because we were talking about the EMF that goes off when you shake it, not understanding what equipment is designed to do and its limitations. That, yeah, that's a huge one. And that's the people that buy stuff that's marketed for ghosts. Like you really have to have a good understanding of what you're measuring like um that's what i don't get about the emf thing is it just seems like overnight people are like this thing i use to detect wires in my wall that detects ghosts now yeah and, and there's like there's like no what? there's no basis behind it and they're like well sometimes um when ghost things happen the emf thing goes up and i'm like but also sometimes when your ghost things happen the emf detector doesn't do squat and sometimes when it goes up, nothing happens. Right. So Passed it's not a wire. It's not really reliable for anything. I think it is good to test the environment with it. Because we know it makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. My, my big one uh, that I know. Okay. So like the thermal camera, we bought a thermal camera because I thought it was so awesome. I still like it. That, that we were going to get uh, a ghost on a thermal camera. I was like, oh, I'm either going to get like a blue spot or, or some kind of mist or uh, we're going to see like a person walk by and it's going to be a hot ghost or, you know, just hot whatever. Ghost. Yeah, it's going to be a sexy <laughs> ghost. Uh, we got none of that. What I ended up finding out is it's really good for debunking like real stuff, like animals. It's actually one of our more critical pieces of equipment yeah. that, that gets underused. Like it doesn't work real good as a handheld. It works good, as, but it's no fun unless you're getting to sit and look at it. But the thing nobody understands about those thermal cameras, because I see them on TV and I see other groups using them, and they're like, oh, look, when I panned it over here and it did this thing, and you see this blue spot, what I don't, people don't take the time to uh, invest, they don't invest their time into learning what it really does, because those thermal cameras, they're measuring surface temperature. So if I pointed at a big blank space outside, it's, it's all relative temperature in its surface. So yeah, it's showing a bunch of blue, but it's not really telling you the temperature of the air. So if a cold breeze goes through that big empty it. space, 
the no. whole color scheme. Well, it won't really do much of anything. Is I don't what know. It'll the do. one we have is it'll shift color entirely. Yeah, yeah, it, because it's all relative. But it just it doesn't even make like a blur or anything. We did and, catch a fox with it once though. Until it's got a high enough temperature thing. So what it's meant to really read is like. What is the temperature of this glass, not what is the temperature of the air between the camera and the glass? That's why if you sit in a spot for a really long time and get up and move, it looks like there's still a person sitting right, there. Right, because yeah. it's just looking that at the surface That is my favorite game, though, it is touching stuff and then pointing the... Uh, look at the hand. Print. Emilio says, and turn off your cell, uh, cell phones with the EMF meter, not airplane mode, off, or leave the phones at base camp. That's funny, because one time we were at the jail, and we spent, like, forever chasing down this EMF em field and it was because our devices had made like a triangle oh, of like yeah, emf yeah, yeah. and we were just like what and finally we got we were so confused we didn't think it was a ghost or anything we just didn't know what was making doing it, it. Yeah. yeah it was so nuts and it's really tough because your cell phone's a really good tool for like oh i need my questions or this or that or other but and we're really bad i don't even know that we've done a single investigation where we actually turned all our phones off but we really need to do it the, but the here's the other problem of it though so all of our equipment though all of it is electronic why, why does nobody realize this the thing that makes the biggest emf field is the fucking camera mm -hmm. that we use it's the what in it I, you know what i figured it out it's not the camera it's the giant ass boom mic on top of it because it's got a fucking magnet in it an electromagnet because <laughs> it's a cardioid microphone so if i'm within I don't know, a mile of you, it's going to say that there's an electromagnetic field. That's why anytime I see like EMFs go up and somebody's like, oh, it's because the spirit's talking to us in an investigation. I'm like, no, it's not because I see it in your video. I'm watching it in your video. It could very much possibly be the fact that you're filming it. My favorite video is still, we had that, it was like our very first podcast and we were talking about this group from Canada and one of his videos was he had gotten evidence somewhere and he had brought it home and he was playing it on his computer oh, and he whips yes. out of his EMF detector. He points it at the computer and he goes, the ghost followed me home. I'm getting EMFs right here. And he's pointing it at his computer. We watched that like 20 times. At the computer. He's like, I'm and playing the laughed. evidence on my monitor and I'm putting my EMF detector up to my monitor that's playing the evidence and I'm getting an EMF spike. So the ghost followed me. That was the funniest thing. Is that the Irish or the guy who thought he was an Irish priest? He pretended to be an yeah. Irish ghost once. Yeah, that guy. No, that was that was Canadian Ben. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's still the funniest video um, I have ever seen. But like, so a lot of what people are trying to do is they're trying to record a ghost or they're trying to physically capture the evidence of the ghost but what they're not realizing is the best way to do that to prove what we're doing is measure changes in the environment. environment. And to do that, you need equipment that's not designed to catch ghosts, but to measure the environment. That's thermometers, uh, barometers. thermographic uh, th uh, barometers, thermographic imaging, um, uh, geomagnetometers, stuff like that. But don't just grab it and just because the number's going up, you're like, that's obviously a ghost. Like, you have to know. There's people that are trained to use that equipment. Like, they have to go to school, and you're just buying it off of a shelf and deciding that because the number changed, it's something paranormal. And, and that's what a lot of people are doing. I think and, and, we, and we did it in the beginning, too. I think I, I, I was almost better about that at the beginning when I didn't watch ghost shows. Mm -hmm. And so I was just making it up. Because the first time I did any of this, like, there weren't ghost shows. I was, like, 16. Yeah. And I just kind of had an idea and did that. I didn't have any intent with the equipment i was of course i didn't have very much i i had you know the stuff that was in my room but i think that's almost better because i think watching the shows and stuff can influenced you can really yeah <laughs> it, like it influenced us i think like after me and brad and ali started doing it i'd been watching ghost adventures for like a decade so i was like oh we got to get all the equipment and make it do all the stuff yeah and like you said you know you should turn off all your cell phones which is great, but the thing is, is we don't log EMF activity as paranormal evidence. Like, we'll look for it, we'll look for changes or whatever, but just because it's spiking, we don't assume it has anything to do with paranormal anything. And that's why we haven't been real diligent about doing anything with our, because I, th I think a bunch of people have, con they're like, oh, you got your phone on, 
uh, you could be causing this interference or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but we're not looking for that as... We don't see that as valid evidence anyway. Christy said that show Fear was kind of a ghost show. I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, that was the one that was on MTV where they put people with body cameras in a haunted place. It, it was like the real really? world, but they were... It, I think it was like the first ghost hunting show. I don't know. That sounds but interesting. Though. They took like... It, it, it kind of was because you just got to see people fucking freak out. Freak out. But it was when GoPros first came out, mm. like very first, and they would put them in these like body harnesses where you could see them, and then they had cameras all over the place, and they'd say, this place is fucking haunted, and it was just like people off the street, not like ghost hunters, mm -hmm. and they'd like lock them in there and be like, okay, see if anything paranormal happens, and you'd just watch them freak out over an eight-hour period, just... <gasps> I'm going to have to watch that. That sounds uh, If you can find it, it was on MTV. It, it was a long... I'm talking like 15 years ago. I think I was like in high school. Nice. I, I don't know. Hell, maybe that show's still on. I, I don't know. I don't watch any ghost shows. I just only know what you guys tell me about. So Read Anton's last comment. EMF infrared with thermal and other. I I kind of get what he's saying, but I'm 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 not understanding how he's wording it. Fear was the best for its time and pretty entertaining. Um, I th I think he's asking. Yeah, the the thermal camera. It's it measures temperature through infrared imaging, but that's it's reading surface temperature. So what it's doing is it's it's basically bouncing light off of a surface and the way it receives it back into the lens is how it knows what temperature it is based on distance. All I know about the thermal cam is it's really good at debunk it's your cat I think. Is it's really good at debunking animals. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it definitely it's probably one of the best th especially for like outdoor uh, investigations yeah. and it, it's really good for like spotting like drafts like, like I said it's really bad at spotting air but like if you have like a warm or a cold pipe or something and it's leaking a different temperature air in front it'll like block it and it'll look like a mist oh he's talking about cross-referencing them like if something ha like we'd be a lot more apt to believe something if the thermal cam showed something and the EMF went off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we do that with everything. And you know what we do with our thermal cam that nobody else does with their thermal cam? Set and it up with the IR? Lock yeah, we, we have another camera side by side with it that's looking at it through IR. Because what I'll see on ghost hunters or whatever is they're like, oh, look at this, uh, this ghost that's walking by in here. And, of course, that's the only fucking camera they have looking at anything. And it's like, how do I know your cameraman wasn't, like, walking in for, like, where's the rest of the footage mm -hmm. that goes with it? And it's never there because they use the thermal camera is a handheld camera and that is the worst possible way to actually do it and w we used to do it too because it's more fun to look at it but really it should be set up on a tripod next to another static camera that's looking over a whole area and if you hear footsteps or whatever you need to go back to the footage and like look at it later to see if there was anything in there yeah but we we do really like that like if we get an evp and at the same time something else happens on another orb. piece of equipment not or but like we get an emf or something like that we're really more inclined to go that was interesting we should probably show people that yeah or, or like a vibration like we do track emfs but we don't but it, it doesn't hold up on its own. That's why we're not worried about the... I think that's what he was tagging on to, is I was saying EMFs aren't really... But if we get an EMF and an EVP yeah. and a strange light on the video all at the same time, yeah, we'll say the EMF might have had something to do with it, but... Mina says, is the EMF the thing you were using when you were in the warehouse nine in the bathroom? Were, were we just doing EVPs or do we have the EMF too? The EMF is the thing with like the green screen on the back and then... It'll go off red. Usually, most of ours will go off. We have a couple yeah, yeah. different ones red when it goes up. No, no, no. We, we had both going at the same time. So, you had the uh, you had the Sony IC recorder in the bathroom, and you were doing EVPs in there. And at the same time that we were getting those sounds, my EMF detector, mm -hmm. it, wa it wasn't ticking up much. So, it could have just been being goofy. They do that. Or I could have moved. But it did go up like once or twice, right? And that's, you kick me out of the bathroom. And then I was on the outside of the bathroom and you were talking, you were talking about me bumping around outside, but I hadn't moved. But the whole time I was out there, it was doing the same thing. It would like tick up to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like nothing even real big, nothing even hardly notable. 
but you were getting those noises can, while you were in there. I can still feel the panic a little bit, thinking about me and him being in that bathroom and realizing there was no way to open the door from the inside. Oh, when we first got in there, yeah. that was terrifying. There's and no knob on the inside. There's it's it's you push into the room. Oh you were God. actually there. We didn't have a in, we didn't, didn't have a walkie talkie. We didn't have a walkie talkie that one time. It was oh like the gosh. one time I didn't have one with me, and we had gone up there. You we're closed. Trapped. <laughs> You closed that door. We hadn't even started anything yet. And I was like, oh, wait, open it back up. Like, it's like, I can't see. And we went to do And you're like, oh, shit, there's no knob. I'm like, uh, uh. And then you're like, all right, let's just. Luckily, I was able to, like, jam my hand under the door yeah. frame and pull it. Yeah, oh, we were God. like, well, we'll figure this out in a minute. Uh, let's, and you did the EVP thing. And then you let me out. And you're like, all right, you stand on the outside so we can get out, you know. And then you're like, hey, quit banging around out there. And I'm like, it's not me. And you're like, let me the f- out of here. <laughs> I love I love that uh, that audio clip. Thank hey, you. stop banging around out there. Yeah, Amelia says I'm that bathroom sure. is horrible. It really is. It's claustrophobic and there's no way out. Yeah, yeah. there's any place that does not have a way out. I'm not going in there. I don't like it. Because I don't trust no. anybody to let me back out. It's bad. And, and there's like a weird plumbing sound in there. Even though there has been no plumbing in there for the last hundred years. It's like terrifying gross yeah i don't like that bathroom it's also gross <laughs> no Amelia says not because of activity it's just because there's no quick way out yeah no no not if you've closed that door behind you um I, i've learned to leave it a little bit cracked if i'm gonna go in there and do anything gonna give my mom ptsd thinking about being locked in a bathroom mom tell them the story about the middle of the nowhere bathroom you got locked in for like three hours candy man oh the candy man bathroom uh Oh, the last one is uh, not trying to locate source of activity. Do we have a problem with that? Uh, okay, so we do now because we automatic we we're oh, so yeah, we used to it. So yeah, we automatically say that was nothing. We write it off, but I see a lot of other groups that are like. Uh, Make a noise if you're here, and then you hear a noise off in the distance, and they're like, "Thank you," and then they just like leave it, and I'm like, "Go see what it." was dude like it, it, sometimes it's just like the other side of the room and you hear like a like a click like like nick and that one thing he heard like a click in the back and i understand he was startled a- after being up there all yeah but he goes up to the camera he's like get the fuck up here get up here now blah, blah, blah. but he never like went back to where the sound came from to see like what it like was it a dish that just settled in the sink i feel bad or, for him though because he was very alone it like I'm talking very alone. That is a huge house, man. He was like far away. I guess that we have done that then because I remember watching some of our older videos and there's been times where you guys will hear a noise that sounds scary and instead of going to investigate what it is, you just backtrack out of there and the whole time I'm thinking, I want to know what that was. Uh, Put yourself in danger for me. Well, okay, so... (laughs) People got mad at me about the needful things thing, but I legitimately thought someone had come in that back door because it wasn't locked. Mm -hmm. And I was convinced that someone had come in to rob the place and that if they knew I was there... I was going to get hurt. I, I noticed it. It depends on the location we're at, especially like if we're in a location that we're familiar with, we won't go check it. Like, like if we're from, you know, mm-hmm. it, we hit like this weird uncanny valley. So like when we first started doing it, we would hear like a noise in the back of Kyle and we're like, all right, let's pack up the car. It's it, time to go. It's time to time go. Time. Right. And then we got where we were used to the place and, and we had at some point heard the noise and figured out what causes it. Mm-hmm. And so every time we heard that noise again, it didn't bother us anymore. But we never went to go double check that that was still the thing yeah. making that noise. Yeah. Um, mainly it was the, uh, what is it, the wind chime? The thing wind chimes in, and those trees tree. that pop. Yeah. The popping mm-hmm. trees. We, we never go back and check that. And we're like, okay, that's debunked. That's not scary anymore. And we don't go check it anymore. But if it's a place we're completely unfamiliar with, like needful things. That, like that was the first time we were in needful things, I think. I don't know. All I knew is that y'all were on the other side of town and I was about to be murdered. I used to get more unsettled in places that are in, like, towns because I just assume that it's people being creepy. That's what's scary. Like, if I had been somewhere in the middle of nowhere, I think I would have been less freaked out. But we were, like, right next to the square in Granbury. There had been, like, stuff going on in the square and I was convinced that someone had broke into this. Mm -hmm. Well, broke in. We left the door unlocked. But yeah, that's I. I really thought that I was going to get murdered with an antique. And it, it also depends on how many of us are there at the time that the thing is heard. 
So like if you're there by yourself and and you hear like a physical sound, like somebody broke yeah. in, it probably isn't a good idea to go investigate because, you know, one out of a hundred times, yeah. it's going to be somebody broke in. You're going to get murdered. Um, but if it's, if there's more than one of us. Yeah. Um, then we usually we're pretty check it out. Usually we're pretty good about like we'll both start to backtrack, and then one of us will be like, "No, this is why we're here. We're supposed to investigate the noise, and we're arguing the whole time about, yeah, that's how they all die in the movie. Is there like that? Is you never have a flashback to the horror movie where like let's go check the noise, and then everyone don't you feel stupid being that person ever? I yeah. I always think that my uh, I need to satiate my my curiosity, and if I die, so be it. I'm not okay. <laughs> well, with it's it. funny as I watch the horror movie and you hear the like in the back and they're like Billy you home Billy Billy we should go check on Billy let's split up and I'm like at home watching I'm like what are you doing wouldn't he go yeah you're (laughs) fucking stupid why are you doing that get in the car leave Billy's dead Billy's Um, (laughs) totally dead but then we're at the investigation and we hear the thing in the back and we're like we should go is anybody there but that's what we're there talk ghost we're there to let's let's, let's split up and and go check on it uh, Julie says, Katie and I went to Needful Things to explore after the video. Uh, that place is so close, I felt like I was going to suffocate. Yeah, it is not a spacious area. and Claustrophobic. I, I'm constantly scared I'm going to knock shit down. Oh, yeah. I feel that way every time we go to the, the museum in Granbury, the old jail or whatever. I I've got, like gonna I'm going to elbow something that costs $300. Yeah, they've got those glass like display boxes set up in that people one really room. trust okay. us with some really expensive stuff I your dad, my comments aren't coming up uh don donald says there are ghosts that needful things i think he's actually convinced well, about that place i don't know we were in the back when uh that dresser rattled i don't know why i forgot about and that. i that about lost so, my mind because I, I was back there, there and too. i jumped up and down in front of this dresser and could not for the life of me Make it make that noise. Make it move at all. Well, you know what? Like the ending shot of that episode is you just staring into that mirror, just like <laughs> because you were like freaked. You're like, dude, because the, the I because I've got video of it. I got video right after it happened. I just happened to walk in, and there's just a little bit of it, but you can see the motion light just wobbling, like like that thing was gonna like fall over. Mm-hmm. But the thing is. And granted, you walk around in needful things, and stuff rattles. I mean, it's 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 a it's like pure and beam house. So there's like a big yeah, crawl space. It's old. That happens, but there was nowhere we could walk, jump, run, kick in that room that would make anything wobble like that. That that dresser was. Busy. I don't know that needful things is. Did she haunted. sell that like right after we did that I investigation? Think she, I think she was able to mark it up because of it's that. It's haunted. <laughs> By um, and, and she said people were leaving dolls. Yeah, people were like leaving haunted stuff for her after that, yeah. that which be, is kind of awesome. I think I think that's awesome. I think that'd be so awesome. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, but that that really annoys me when um, people get like the confirmation knock or, or whatever, and they're just cool with it. They're like, "See, the place is haunted. It it made a noise in the back over that you didn't go check." Like they could have been anything. They could have been a, a freaking squirrel. In we the run wall. into enough raccoons that I always assume raccoon. Um, Lisa says, "What do y'all consider evil instead of ghost hauntings, or have you?" Well, I think we might have some different ideas on this. Yeah, I think if there's anything out there that's we can't see or touch, I don't believe that human spirits, because I don't think that's a thing. That it would have to. Ha- I don't think it would have malicious intention. How do you know if it's evil or just like going about its business? Well, the the way I always think of it, right, is so we're we're hunting for these paranormal things, and um, you know, if it's not you know if it's not human, most people call it a demon, but more aptly, it would be an alien. You don't know that it's a... You don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I feel like it appears evil, maybe because of some of the stuff... Like, in some of the ghost stories... Now, I don't believe in ghosts, so it's... it's Sorry for... Well, well, my thing is, is how could you assume to know its intent? Like... like, um, I get why they think it might be evil if some of the stuff is really happening, and, like, people are getting scratched or hurt, but... Well, I'm sure chickens and cows think humans are really evil. I mean... They're not wrong. We freaking slaughter them to eat them, but like we're not. Don't be delicious, then. We're not doing it with like a malicious intent. Um, we don't. We don't know why they do those things. You know, maybe okay. So like one of the things is demons feed on fear, right? So they do things to scare us. Well, maybe 
maybe that's true. Maybe they do feed on that feel, fearful energy, but maybe they don't like doing it. That makes me think of Monsters, Inc., where they're exactly, harvesting the kids' terror. It, like, they, I don't think they were being malicious in particular. They just needed electricity. And they thought it was kind of funny. And then I like at the end, they figure out the laughter, laugh, the laughter works, and so they go with it. And then, You've seen that movie. Yeah. Okay. That's I, an adorable I, movie. I want to watch Monsters, Inc. We now. used to call our neighbor her little girl, Boo, because she... Just show up she, randomly? And she wouldn't talk. Yeah. But... Anyway, I don't, I don't know about the. I, do you have any idea on the I, evil thing? I kind of treat it like, uh, like animals, kind of. When you know animals aren't doing anything evil, evil or bad, you're kind of forcing human emotions and human morality on an animal. I don't know and if I make my cat mad. And then he poops on my bed. I feel like that's evil. He's establishing dominance. dominance. <laughs> but I feel like it's kind of the same thing. Of if it's a, if it's a entity I, I don't believe in the human ghost thing either but if it's like an entity where are we forcing human emotions and human morality on it and why does that specifically have to be see i'll clear i'll and- clarify on the human ghost thing like i've seen things that look human that do ghost things but they always seem to be like the the repeating sort of apparition thing which i don't think is the same thing as a ghost i think that's like a like a recording thing sort of deal so Stone tape theory uh, no, sorry, I just wanted that. to say it. I know. Yeah, well, that's what everybody else recognizes that, and th- those are the things I think are human, or, or like it's an imprint of a human, but it's not that person there anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just an image of it. I like the imprint theory; it's fun. The thing, the things we run into that seem to be able to like talk back or answer questions it's very rare anyway anything interactive and it's debatable, but anything that seems like it's actually trying to interact with us. There's no science behind this, but it doesn't seem human. It seems like something doing its best impression of human. Or maybe mm-hmm. it's just close. Uh, at least it says, but possessions are evil, right? I don't actually believe in... Pos- do you? Do you believe in possessions? Do I, I don't... I'm not sure if any of us are... There, uh, uh, I used to, but, but after doing this a long time, every single case where somebody has talked to me about it, where they've experienced it, like we know more about mental health now. It seems it, like a it, psychological reaction. It, 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 it seems like there's a lot of other factors in it. Or, um, and then when I look at like past cases, like, and I just review like what's available out there, it still doesn't seem like there's enough data out there that to suggest it's really a, a paranormal entity. Yeah. Now I say that, and then you know one of these times we're going to actually run into it, and then I'm going to feel really. But if bad, we do, we'll but, change our opinion real fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the biggest thing, I, the closest thing I have in relation to it is the story of the greenhouse, which if you, you know, read anything. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, he also drank heavily. So maybe it was just alcoholism or maybe he had an undiagnosed mental health issue or you never know. Or maybe somebody has like a multiple personality or schizophrenia D-I-D. and they actually do believe that they are possessed by somebody else because they don't feel like they're in their body. I think belief is very strong. Yeah. But and the only possession I've run into possession with the quotes is someone who is under severe psychological mm-hmm. stress. So yeah. I think I would have to see more to have like a real opinion about that. And even if it was a spirit type entity taking over somebody's body, again, I wouldn't see it a possession as an evil thing. Maybe they're trying to be human. Maybe they want to experience what it's like to maybe be human. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. Maybe, maybe they, they don't, don't understand. Know. Yeah. In or maybe like we can't see ghosts. Maybe they can't see us. They don't know that that's a thing. Maybe they think we're not real. You all, so. you have to have a moral code and an understanding of good and evil to be evil. Yeah. Right. And again, if I'm treating them like an alien animal type thing, the morality thing like, is not that. Okay, if you kick over an anthill, are you evil? To them, I guess. But so to if us, an alien no. nukes our entire planet so it can have our sweet, sweet oil, to us, not we evil. Find human, well, I mean, human. by that example, so if you kick over an ant hill, are you evil? No. Which I do not. every time I see one. Okay. So what did God do in the very, very beginning of the uh, the Old Testament? He flooded the uh, fucking planet. God murdered when, everybody. Yeah. But we don't consider God evil. Oh, well, he had a reason for it. We just don't understand it. But I bet well, those people felt pretty burned by that. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it depends on how you apply that logic. you got to be real careful with that because you're you're making your own slippery slope argument there. You are 
saying that you understand the motivations of something that is not you, which can't be done. Mm -mm. Um, John says religious trauma can pose, uh, can cause possession type reactions. That's really interesting. And I hadn't thought yeah. about that one. Well, you know, people that believe heavily yeah. in possession are, are more likely to be possessed. Also, I guess there's the thing if you have a really religious family of what's gotten into you? Why are you acting this way? The devil has possessed oh, you. Oh, that and poor then... lady that was drowned. drowned. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was she in New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a really uh, good documentary that they did. Because her family thought they were helping. I have not seen that one. You'll have oh, to tell me about brutal. it. Oh, it's brutal. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll find yourself being really mad, but you, you'll you find Most yourself... Most documentaries make me so mad, but yeah, I watch but them you, anyway. <laughs> you can't blame them. Like, they were trying to help her. That's it, how it always goes. They always have good intentions, but... It's, just, it's, re it's really weird, and it's just like this... It's and it's a, like a different culture. It's too. a mass so, hysteria. It's a mass hysteria case is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it is. And it's like when it was all done, they were just like... Oh, oh crap. Oh, <laughs> shit. Like, all of a sudden, it clicked. Um, so, I didn't put it on the list, but I think the number one thing that hurts groups, like with their investigations, is not having the ability to go back and admit mistakes or or go back and debunk their body of work there have been I, I think that's the one thing that we don't do wrong at all yeah we're pretty consistent about pointing out our own flaws so oh man um very early on the, there'd be times where we're like hey we captured this cool thing we think it's a, a ghost or you know this is a legit evp and then we find something else out or we go back to the location or something like that and we find out oh no 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 it turns out it's this other thing we will go back and dispute our own stuff. And if we can go back to the location, we will go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I never see anybody willing to do that. Like if you push, if you if you give an alternate explanation and they didn't test that alternate explanation, they'll just double down. Oh no, it couldn't have been that. Ooh, yeah. You didn't you know, like if we do something like you know, we always test like plumbing. I know some other groups AC. that are pretty good at that. So I, I do now. Yeah, only the oh, ones now, we know yeah. personally, mm -hmm. but uh, none none of the ones that are popular. Um, but you know, we we have all the stuff. You know, we hear a noise. We check all the stuff that could possibly make a noise, and we say we couldn't explain this noise. Blah blah blah. And then somebody just comments on YouTube. They're like, "Well, did you check this?" And we didn't. I go, "Oh shit, yeah, that's a possibility." Okay, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily debunked, but this could be a thing. We didn't check it. Uh, if we get the chance, we'll go back and check it and see if it's that thing. If it's that thing, we'll say so. If it's not that thing. I guess it's like a constructive criticism thing. If you can't take constructive criticism, you feel like they're personally attacking you. Oh, yeah. Emilio and, uh, says, because you get invested in your evidence and you have a sense of pride for it, it makes it hard to admit you were wrong, yeah. especially in a field that's already viewed so cynically. Like, I would be heartbroken if someone clearly debunked that one EVP I have from Kyle. Uh, and, and I think, I think eventually on a long enough timeline, we can, I would be down to argue. I, I, I would be in the wrong, but it would yeah. be a knee jerk reaction. Well, the, the other reason I think it's so hard for groups to go back and say, no, this evidence isn't, is, isn't valid or whatever, or, well, we didn't actually find anything is because over a period of time, you invest a certain amount of time. And a lot of money, and I mean, we're An effort. Just geez. we're probably ten thousand dollars or more in the hole in this hobby. At least I am, just in buying equipment, mm -hmm. securing locations, stuff like that. We have spent a lot of money. We have spent a lot of time doing this, and to feel like you came up with absolutely nothing just feels like a complete and total waste. Yeah. Like, like we we own five thousand dollars just in camera equipment, right? How do I justify that expense? If you've got nothing. Fun. Yeah. I justify it yeah, with Yeah, it's like fun. going and seeing a movie or something. We went on a hike. Well, I, I mean, that's good for us. Yeah. We can come to terms with that. But other groups go, I'm going to buy this stuff so I can catch a ghost. And then you never catch a ghost. So then you make up ghosts. So at some point, you invest a certain amount of money, and you, and you know in your heart of hearts you've never caught a ghost. And there's a certain switch that flips. In, in a certain percentage of those people that goes, well, I'm going to figure out how to Photoshop mm -hmm. or I'm going to figure out how to make a ghost. And, and, then, and then you have hoaxers, you know, and it kind of veers off because they've invested so much of that time and money and emotion into not only doing the thing, but convincing the other people that this thing is worth doing and convincing other people that this thing is real well, and there's a difference between a hoaxer and someone who's just doubled down because they feel like they did their best with their best equipment and you're taking something away from right, them. Right, yeah. 
which I feel is an honest reaction. Yeah, and and to be fair, it is way easier to tear something down than it is to build something. It, it's so hard to go out and capture even bad evidence. Well, as Julie says, once you catch it, what are you going to do with it? Try and recreate it multiple times. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what we do because it's not. Well, it's like our it's like our one true orb picture. You know, the green halo. It's everybody wants to go. Well, see. Except you, that was you only once. It. You got to be able to do it. 20 times to yeah it's it's not repeatable the part that was repeatable is where we debunked all the mm. orbs it is an interesting picture and yeah. i know it's not Still a reflection fun. but that doesn't mean it was a goddamn ghost there's yeah. a million things it could be before it's a ghost i also guess that if you're on the side of you use mediums and psychics and that sort of thing and that's kind of their livelihood and people are able to debunk their big thing that they've kind of built this entire livelihood out of then what well, are they left that with? sounds like somebody that's making money yeah. off of being a medium and you know if i was making good money it being a bad medium i would never admit it either yeah. one part of me doesn't blame them if you can sucker people into do paying it. tons of money do it but then i also understand that in some ways that's unethical if unless you're giving these people something valid yeah are you giving them a valid peace, peace of, of mind, mind or uh, uh, candles to help them meditate and make them feel yeah. better. But if you're not giving them anything, that feels immoral. Yeah. As long as you're giving at least a placebo because placebos they work. They work. Yeah. You, you have to at least be giving hope and some kind of relief for it to be valid. Yeah. Because Otherwise, it, you're just it, a dick. At least yeah. then you can just be a therapist in disguise. Yeah. That, that's what you're doing. And you, you're actually charging less. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you'll notice on our business card, it says peer counseling. That's in place of psychic advice. Oh, yeah, it's, Julie says hope. Yeah, that's that that feels like something you can sell. It's a commodity. That's fine to me. But I mean, you had that house where somebody convinced them Satan was trying to kill their baby, and you basically went in and gave them peace of mind. And yeah, we did an investigation, and then we did peer and counseling. That felt yeah. nice. Yeah, they were able to move back and have their it life. It would have been back. nice to get paid for that. <laughs> it would have been real nice if someone hadn't gone in there and ruined the, their entire life for free. He didn't even get paid. You know, that that's a weird satisfaction that uh I mean, I, I get I guess you just said you did too, but it's a weird unexpected satisfaction that I've got from doing this. And it's such a silly thing for me to feel satisfaction over cuz I don't even believe in ghosts. Well, like I feel I went proud in of and it. Convinced like it, someone that their house wasn't haunted. And I feel good about that. I just, yeah, like I, I feel really weird. Yeah, it's just a weird feeling. It's like this. It started off as kind of like a hobby sort of deal, and it's it's really kind of silly, and we have fun with it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, every now and then, like I can say we've legitimately helped somebody with this nonsense. <laughs> it's nonsense. It's we we go hunt for dead people. Yeah. We go hunt for dead people, and people are like, "You made my life better. Thank you." And I'm like. What? Well, we go in there and we unearth that they've actually got like trauma and that they have problems at home, and then we help them figure out what their problems are. Sometimes we find them. out their toaster is just broken. Yeah, their toaster is just broken. Their Our advice their is you should weird. probably buy a new toaster and and get your construction finished. And they're like, I should probably buy a new toaster and get my construction finished. And I'm like, I feel like we did something really we valuable. We did good. We yeah, did good today. Way to go, guys. Pat on the back. Yeah. We, sometimes sometimes we're so bored we play with kitties and tell people to buy new toasters and just get over it. You know, if there's a kitty, ghost hunt over. Ghost hunt under. <laughs> ghost hunt over. I or a, a raccoon. Kitty. Or a... Uh, Look, I just wanted to pet the raccoon. We found an armadillo today. Oh, I got really close to it. I took a picture. I'll show you later. And a squirrel. It was not remotely scared of us. It a was very, just like, hey, guys. <laughs> and a very brave squirrel. Yeah. Any animal that is willing to come up to me that doesn't want to eat me, I'm all my attention is on them now. Yeah. But Fine. anyway, so yeah, we've done a lot wrong through our ghost hunting career. But we have improved. It, we have improved, and, and we're we going to continue to do more wrong. Yeah, we're we're going to find new ways to mess up. Everybody will. Yeah. Um, but I think the most important thing to take away from all this, I think, what I was saying was what my last point was. It's okay to mess up. Just don't pretend you're fucking infallible. Don't don't double down on that thing you got. Six years ago, I believe in ghosts because of this one thing. Well, I'm sorry, dude. I proved you wrong. I hate to shake the whole foundation of your belief system, but you need to be a little bit more flexible. Fine, it's fine to still believe in ghosts, even though your ghost evidence got. I'm my ghost evidence is pretty much debunked, 
it, the thing that got me halfway started into this, but I still kind of think there's stuff going on. So I'm looking for it in new ways. And it's just, it's just the reality of it. And I would like to see more groups being more flexible in that thinking in that, Hey, the, the way we're doing this, you have a point. It is actually like, we're right. When we say you're not proving anything with any of this stuff that any of us are doing, you have to, th you have to think of it from a new angle, like the, our orb experiment or looking at the, the frequencies of EVPs like that stuff is important. And yeah, it debunks this body of work, but find what it doesn't debunk and then figure out what the next step is and quit being a crybaby about it. Mm -hmm. So tired just of that. Be better. Just be better. Yeah. <laughs> and and the other thing is, is we always invite people to critique our stuff too. Like it, we were very, very unpopular in the beginning because I was posting like six and seven hour videos of footage because I was not afraid to show the whole thing like mm -hmm. it wasn't just cut up just so you could see the evidence parts and people are like this is really boring it's like yeah but you can't say that we cut anything out of this or edit it mm -hmm. in any way so so if we said this certain thing was evidence they'd be like well like five minutes earlier in the video this happened and you're wrong and we'd be oh okay thank you 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 have to be open to that and yeah. i just i think that's the I think that's the ultimate mistake that, that hinders everybody is they're just they're unwilling to change or go back and, and have made mistakes and, and change the way they do things. Yeah. And uh, I, pri I pride us on that not being our mistake. And I think that's what makes us really good at what we do. Not because we're good at hunting ghosts or proving anything. But because we're willing to like Accept try criticism and it, change it and try new things and make crappy videos like I, I understand why we have such horrible reviews and and I get that this podcast is not that entertaining but we do it because we like it <laughs> and, and that's why we don't take money for anything either it, it's it doesn't feel right charging somebody for something that we're just fucking up like <laughs> nine times out of ten that's just I don't know but okay well I know thoughts Final. That was my final thought. Did you? Did you have a final thought, Jerry? My final thought was be better. <laughs> okay. Um, if you haven't been by the website, um, go check out the website. Like we have improved the way our blog system, all that works. And um, if you have a group or you work in paranormal or you sell oddity, like, like if you sell incense for witches or something, like anything that's like loosely related to the paranormal field or whatever and you want like your business listed or your services listed or whatever we have an affiliates page now and you can uh send us a message uh and and i'll tell you what kind of info it will need an image and then i'll tell you what info we need so that we can post you guys up and then if you have any uh input for things that you think should go into the uh the uh the ethics uh, draft that I, I'm starting to come up with, please message me that stuff because I want to look over it. Uh, I'm looking for input from other people in the community because I, I want this to be like a like a unionized sort of thing, where because the because the other i the other idea behind it is too is the other thing is um it's now more popular than ever that places are like hey you can come investigate for a hundred dollars for the weekend or a thousand dollars for the weekend or six hundred dollars and it's like all over the map and a lot of it is way overpriced a lot of it's like way underpriced the other thing i want to do is kind of throw out some numbers that we think are like fair numbers for getting to investigate certain types of property and stuff like that because like i don't think it's like there's a place i want to do over in um mineral, miner wells. In mineral wells real bad but she wants uh almost like a thousand dollars to go spend four to six hours in there while they like watch you the whole time while they yeah and it's a guided investigation like i'm not spending that much to have somebody else guide me around their place and i don't have access to the whole thing and they say there's guaranteed activity because that's a lie. like the whole thing is is a red flag so you know i, I know what we pay to do places that we like doing so sometimes the, i don't think they charge enough because i think the place is really interesting and it has amenities like a, a bathroom or a kitchen where, where you can uh, keep your drinks and stuff like that. You know, that they, they offer a little bit extra and they're not charging enough while 
we'll go rent a haunted hospital that's got absolutely no plumbing. It's got a bucket down in the basement it's for us. Black mold. It's got black mold and hazards and stuff. And they're charging like six hundred dollars for us to stay overnight when you know we have full amenities at the hotel down the road for ninety dollars for a night. So, I mean, and not in Yoke. I think Yokum was appropriately priced. We got that for twelve hours. Mm-hmm. It, it was basically twenty five bucks an hour is what we paid. I th- I thought that was pretty fair. But the other place is like, well, you can only be here four hours. Um, that includes like setup time. They don't want you bringing your own equipment. They they want to freaking walk around. It's a tour. I'm not paying that much for a tour stuff like that. So um, I kind of want to like throw out some ideas of hey, this is standardized price to maybe get these people in check because everybody's got. It's we'll a, see. <laughs> huh? We'll see how that goes. I don't know, but you know, if enough of us get together and we say, hey, we're not paying that like. We're not paying a thousand dollars for four hours while you hold our hands. That's stupid. And people stop going there, they'll people will start falling in line because it's really the wild west in mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Like I think we only charge like twenty five dollars total to take people through warehouse nine. That includes a dinner, a presentation, and an all night freaking investigation. Like it's nuts. And we provide like equipment. And we'll either help you or let you kind of wander around on your own. Like, that's a pretty good deal to mm-hmm. be able to just do that. So, I don't know. But anyway, if anybody's got any input on that, I send me send me some uh, private messages on that. Um, but I'm going to be working on that over the next couple of weeks and, and getting with some other people. Tell her, no, we do not accept donations. No, we don't accept donations. No. We do not accept donations. We just, uh, I had an extensive conversation about that on my other interview, too. They're yeah, like, it feels he, wrong to take money, that's why. He yeah. Man, he was trying so hard to convince me that we needed to, to uh, take people's money. He's like, well, you guys offer a service. Y'all make people feel better. <laughs> I'm like... Man, you don't understand. The minute we take a dollar from anybody, anything we do is just completely invalidated. I like what Emilio is. Uh, his apartment's haunted. We can stay there, you know, for 500 He needs rent. <laughs> <laughs> Charge that ghost rent, man. <laughs> Pay your dues, just slacker. Well, thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah everybody have a, uh excellent weekend. Um, we'll try to be back next week. I don't know. Maybe we're doing a Strictly Sickly. I'm not sure. Uh I don't know. I'm kind of putting that off. I don't know. Are you? Boo. Boo. Are you not sick enough for strictly Well, sick I was going to do one on arthritis, but that's a lot of research. And I haven't <laughs> I don't felt like it. Do work. So if we're being honest here, it seems like a lot of work. We can try a different episode. It's fine. I don't know. We'll see. We'll I, have to, I'll talk about <laughs> it with Allie and everybody. I don't know. I feel I feel like this podcast was a little bit dry. This was this was just another one of those. It's also that, been almost two and a half hours. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, it wasn't... Sure. It wasn't as entertaining as I, I think we usually are, but um, we're never entertaining. I don't know what you're I've, talking about. I've got a lot of topics like listed out that I'm going to cover, so um, we'll probably try to do something uh, next week on one or the other shows, and then um, we actually have like uh, an investigation coming up that I have to schedule with <laughs> Sam. Um, so actually, me and you need to see about getting with uh, Sam this weekend to see if we can get something scheduled out Um, because that one's going to be interesting. Um, Anyway, so everybody have a good weekend. Everybody stay safe. Enjoy Labor Day. Hope everybody's got Monday off. Um, Don't get arrested trespassing. Don't be in large groups. (coughs) But you know no one listens to Oh, yeah. Um, It's also proven that uh, ghosts carry COVID because people are dying of COVID and they're becoming ghosts. And then all the ghosts hang out in the big groups. So, you know, stay with the groups. And uh, they they take the COVID over to the spirit world. And ghosts also, they don't wear masks. They're against it. They're rude. Don't they wear hoods? No. (laughs) They did until COVID came around and now they're just bare mouthed everywhere. (laughs) <laughs> fucking bare live. mouth ghosts <laughs> just yeah. mouth breathing EVP <laughs> machines sounds moist okay right. <laughs> everybody Bye, have a great weekend I gotta find the thing oh my god I'm gonna wave forever don't turn it off just let it wave